Tonight I'll be talking to Ted Cook from Anti-DIY HVAC YouTube channel. He's a service tech, he's a business owner, he's been around the trade for a long time, and he's going to have a lot of useful information for you guys to listen to. We're going to converse about various things, but uh, make sure in the live chat you guys are voicing your opinion and asking any questions that you want to ask. That way we can help you out in any way that we can, and you just get entertained by some fun conversation as well. There could be some fun stuff happening later in the show, so tune in then as well. Watch the whole thing, enjoy, and uh, let's get started. Hello, my name is Zach Ciotta, and this is the HVAC Fake News. And this shirt pattern is desirable to some women. An article at airconditioningsystems.com states that the HVAC business will grow from $43 billion to $63 billion by 2029. Most of that money will go towards repairing broken Goodman units. Recently in June, the world celebrated Refrigeration Day, where the theme was cooling matters. While electricians, plumbers, HVAC technicians, and other skilled trade workers sweated out in the field, engineers gathered together and decided which one of the refrigerants was the best for the world and the worst for the technicians. HVAC technicians are vast and they're becoming a very wealthy group. The reason why many of the technicians are becoming so very wealthy is that by the time they get home from work, most of the stores are closed and they can't spend any of the money that they have made. In fact, most of the money the HVAC technicians spend is going through a drive through at 8.30 p.m to order some form of food before they go home to fall asleep with their clothes on. And our final story for today before we get our show started is that HVAC is getting with the modern times. No longer will they have HVAC man of the year or woman of the year. Now in our gender fluid and genderless society, we will now be celebrating HVAC group of living cells of the year. Any possible living thing that can perform an HVAC task is eligible to win HVAC Group of Living Cells of the Year. Enjoy the show. This has been the HVAC Fake News with Zach Ciotta. Hello and welcome back to HVAC Shop Talk. I'm your host, Zach Ciotta. Good to be back here. Good to be back on Saturday night. Saturday night. What are we all doing here? Do we not have lives? Well, I'm glad you guys don't have lives and you're here hanging out with me. At least uh, dozens of you. Look at that. Dozens of you came by to check out the show. I really appreciate that. We have a lot of fun there. hope you guys enjoyed the opening of the show. I, I enjoyed making it. Always got to make at least one joke about Goodman. Please don't be offended. A lot of Goodman guys say, hey, Zach, I put in 42,000 Goodmans, and uh, you know what? They're all fine. None of them ever had a problem. Everything's going great. That's a lie. Okay, that guy's lying, uh, but uh, I'm just having fun. Just having fun, having a good time, and glad that uh, you guys have decided to spend Saturday evening with myself and Ted in just a minute, and uh, we're going to have Ted in just a second. I'm getting used to uh, having all the controls again because when I, you know, do the little live streams during the days, it was pretty simple. That's to go on, take a few calls, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. But, uh, you know, I stepped it up a notch here. We stepped it up a notch, adding back the little HVAC news. I got a segment a little bit later in the show. I was watching something from like a couple years ago, and it was myself 
and NorCal and AK having a conversation. And AK told a story about using the restroom at like a Ferguson. And it's hilarious. So I clipped it out and I have, I've added it to the show. After Ted's done, we're going to go ahead and we'll watch that. It's going to be, it'll be hilarious. Okay. It'll be a lot of fun. So I uh, want to say hello to the chat people down there. We got Roger, Lizaraga, Dirty Waters, Jay Milo, Puffin Stuff, Parkour. I like the Puffin Stuff. Hey, hey, Mr. Puffin Stuff. Eddie, Parkour, Zachary Craig, HVAC Tech, Wannabe. I like your name, man. Kangaroo God, HVAC is his life. Blue Air, Sean Price, Old Handy Luke. Man, we got a lot of guys here. All right. Uh, cooling with Kraus. Cooling with Kraus. HVAC, I like your name too, Kraus. I like Allison Kraus as well. It's an unrelated subject. Unrelated. So, yep, Ted will be here in a minute. You guys can ask Ted questions too. Ted said he will take phone calls. So if you guys want to call a little bit later in the show and talk to Ted about something, you want to ask him which train is the tallest, which color air conditioner is the best, whatever. It'll be great. Uh, will, what's up, Will? Good to have you with us. Matt T, good to have you too. Man. It's a lot of fun, guys. A lot of fun, guys. But uh, we got to bring Ted in here. I'm not going to sit here and dawdle, but I also have to create a, a segment in between this and when Ted comes in because there's some magic on the other screen that I have to do, uh, some last-minute stuff I realized that I have to do. And uh, Susie, gosh, it's good to see you too, Susie Dunn, man. All my favorite people are here. Adam Black, what's up, Adam Black? Shannon Knight. And Ted will call you, like, Shannon wears your sunglasses at night or something like that. I think that's what Ted's name for you is. He will he will brief us when he comes in here. But uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play, like, the shortest little sponsor thing, which I actually wasn't going to play, but now I think I'm going to because uh, I need to, basically, if I can. And then we'll come back in just a moment, and I'll have Ted with me, and that's how that's going to work. So stay tuned for uh, Ted Cook Guys from the Anti-DIY HVAC YouTube channel. In just a few seconds. This is the Navac NP2 DLM Brake Free Cordless Vacuum Pump. Unlike most vacuum pumps, these run off of battery power. No more cords across a roof, no more looking for a plug. These pumps use high performance lithium ion batteries powering a brushless DC motor. Features include isolation ball valve, backflow prevention check valve, and an ultimate vacuum of 23 microns. Plus, it's probably the lightest vacuum pump you'll ever own. This is the MP2 DLM vacuum pump from Navac. Yeah, I think I did that all right. Welcome to the show, Ted Cook. All right. What's up? What's up with you, man? How's it going? I like the news thing. You like the news? Hey, do you I like did. it? Because, because of the Goodman thing, right? Well, I mean. Tell the truth, right? I do have a little complaint about the Goodman joke thing. I mean, you don't make it clear that Goodman actually is a joke, but you make at least one Goodman joke. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's a gray area. I try to live in the gray area because if you live in the gray area, then you, you, you're happy with everybody. You know, everybody's like, Hey, I don't think he was really making fun of us. He was just having fun when in all actuality, I think I hate them. Let's just not make fun of train so I don't have to go to my safe space. Well, <laughs> hey, we don't want any of that. <laughs> we, we don't want any safe space stuff. I don't think I can take any of that. Some new age things. Uh, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't call yourself new age, would you, Ted? I'm afraid not. No. <laughs> I'm afraid I just wouldn't be able to. Oh, there's a lot of people in there. Uh, yeah, there's dozens of people lined up Couple to see what's going to happen here. My favorite's in there. Shannon, I wear my sunglasses at night, is here. That's what I'm saying. He was here earlier, and uh, I like Rob down there. Says all the brands are junk. All of them are tied Man. for last, including well, Train. All but Train are junk. Yeah. America um, Standard because they're the same. Close. The yeah. Same the other Oxbox. cosmetically. Oxbox is not the same. <laughs> hey, there's a uh, one of the RJs. There's Susie. Man, there's a lot of them there. Feels like old times. I gotta start Better. doing the giveaways again, so they all come in. You know, they all came when I did that, with the little balls and stuff like that. Yeah, they would flow in to watch it spin and see if somebody got a, a Tam Nine or something. No, Shannon wanted the Tam Nine, but everybody mm -hmm. else wanted the S Mans. Shannon would always say the answer to something was Tam Nine. 
Yeah, most people know that I was wrong about one of my own air handlers one time. And I said, no, man, that's a TAM-8. That's before I got to it and before we got to the nines. And I think he went back and screenshotted something out of my own video and proved me wrong. So, so let, me, let me get this right. The biggest mistake that you made was saying TAM-8 instead of TAM-9. That's the biggest mistake that I admitted I made. Oh, okay. It's not All the right. biggest mistake I made. <laughs> I was about to say, that's not big. That's not a big no, one. It's the biggest one I owned up to recently on YouTube, but yep. yeah, I've made a, I've made a few. I don't think you're learning any things if you never make any mistakes. What I've noticed is that the only difference between, between one person and the next is the person that admits that a mistake was made. Everyone makes them. It's just no one yeah. admits it. There's an illusion of perfection. I'll that's what I said, even on a video, and it gets me uh, some recognition from some people, and then some of the installers get all mad because I showed their job, you know, and it's like, I, I didn't give your name and address. I just said, here's what we did wrong. Now, here's how we correct it. I've only done that a few times. And, uh, I, I just watched a video where you were walking through... Uh, in my show research, I was watching a, a video where you're up in the attic of this house and it was like uh, there was the name of it. I really liked. First of all, let me start there. The name of it. I really liked. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was like four or five words in a row that were associated with it being a bad job. It was like hack, awful, pathetic, worst or like something like that. But, it, you know, it lived up to it because you went up in the attic and when there was, there was all these flex runs everywhere. That's what I thought about because yeah. you're up there going, well, this is bad. This is real bad. Let me look at the other side. Look at that flex. It's bad. I was like, it does look pretty bad. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, I guess, you know, calling out for what it is. Just I like, even like put you said. sabotage in the title yeah. when I can. <laughs> you did put sabotage in the title. That's, that's what Honestly, was. that makes it show up in some searches, I think. So what? Why do you? So is that the only reason for writing sabotage? Because sabotage is like something is intentionally done. Like spies came in and switched the duck size. Well, initially when I learned that trick, it was uh, authentic. It was true. It was uh, sincere. And then when I realized that word sabotage was a big uh, clickbait, if you will. I used it a couple times after that when it wasn't exactly applicable and a lot of the comments um, did point that out to me. You know, nobody sabotaged this. They're just dumb and installed it wrong. Um, you know, stuff like that. Well, the commenters are always going to gonna help you out with any moral dilemma that you falter on. They will correct you, which is good. You and know. I help them out too. All I need to do is see which way they came in. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Uh, the other the other video I watched, well, I watched more than two, but the, one of the other ones I watched, uh, you started talking to the commenters about, I, I don't know, it must have been an ongoing thing about them kind of uh, rear seat quarterbacking. Yeah. And it was like this whole thing about, I don't, I don't know if it was like you called them super techs. I think super tech is a common word that everybody uses, but it was something like that. Now, what was warriors. that, like building up or something over time? You know, um, I guess it just came out. So what happens, and the reason you can't put it together, is I don't let any comments through without reviewing them. So it's unfortunate, but probably 20% of the comments are actually published. Um, the biggest reason for that is, I don't know if you realize this, but some of the HVAC guys have a really foul mouth. Mm -hmm. And they do yeah. the same thing on, and I can't say that I'm Sister Mary Elephant or whatever, but... Um, I can't say I'm perfect because I'm absolutely not, but if you're on a camera or on a keyboard or in writing or something, you really should be a little more selective about, you know, what you do for the world and everybody to see. So I try to edit through the comments and, you know, a couple of F-bombs and the S-word and, you know, whatever, and, you know, I just delete it and don't let it through. And, yeah. Uh, so sometimes when I'm talking about comments and it's something that nobody ever saw i don't realize that yeah i, I do the you same know. thing i put filters on my comments so certain words get held back so i can take a look at it and it doesn't mean i'm going to delete them or something like that but i would just want to take a look at it and see what it's all about uh i'd like to do that that's a more sophisticated way but <laughs> first i've got to stop working 
12 hour days, eight days a week. And, and then maybe, maybe I would have a little more time to put into that, but I just, I have it set to where they all have to be reviewed before they're released. You know, it's a pain. You're doing uh, a few videos a week, right? So you, you do have to go home and edit them and upload them and all that stuff. Don't you? I was, but the last few weeks, uh, the last, actually the last month, month and a half, um, all of my spare time, we got a lake house finally, and I've wanted one for, I mean, I'm 60 and I wanted one since I was 25. So that took a while. That was a big goal. Yeah. But we've been working on that a lot. And I just, uh, I did finally get an actual good service tech. I really have a good one now that I can just send everything to name, number, everything. And that's the first time in 33 years I've ever been able to let an employee totally communicate, close in, close out from start to finish. So all I do is dispatch the calls that I give to him now. Um, so I have gotten some time here recently. Unfortunately, I just took that time and shifted it somewhere else. Uh, why, why did it take so long to find a service tech you were willing to uh, trust the way you trust this one? Well, um, actually I convinced him to close his business down and come take over with mine, but, uh, Oh, so it's sort of like the thing you were emerge, talking about before. Kind of a, kind of a merge, but really instead of the whole thing, I wish it was like I was talking about before a plan for retirement, but it's not really that. But so what it is, is we're kind of splitting and letting the service department go this way. And I'm taking the install, uh, you know sort of under my belt. And so all I do is just dispatch calls right to him. What happens to uh, Ted doing service calls on YouTube then? Um, I still do a few on Sundays. So because I don't, I don't believe that you should make anybody work on, or let anybody work on Sundays. I don't believe in that. So I don't even facilitate that. So if there's some emergencies, whatever, I'll go myself. And then I do take a few select ones just to try to make videos. But unfortunately, as I'm sure you know, or sure you can imagine, when you're trying to make a decent video from a service call, it can just go dud on you right in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it can just happen and it's just not worth putting up. And it's not good for your channel to have, you know, an average of 10,000 views in the first day and then put up one that gets 2,500. It's just not a good idea. I'm guessing it's not a good idea. I've never figured out those algorithms and stuff, but I don't know either. Um, um, obviously I, I can't tell you why one video will just explode with popularity and another one is just useless. But, uh, so unfortunately probably two to three service calls a week versus six or eight a day is what I've changed to. Well, I mean, that's, that's sort of, what it should be right is that are you satisfied with that well um it hasn't helped the youtube channel any but i'm really satisfied with getting a lot of saturdays off so to speak i mean in other words now i've got time to go supervise look behind the installs i've got time to go you know just to take saturdays somewhat off now i still keep the phone at all times um I remember years ago walking around with a little pad in my pocket and a pencil and answering the phone uh, at Bush Gardens and, you know, on vacation and stuff. And of course, dispatching the calls to whoever's covering for me, but um, I still handle that. I still answer the phone, but yeah, to answer the question, I do like it and it's part of the goal. So I did get some of it off of me. So now I can do sales calls in a more relaxed manner and I can go look behind every install and try to catch some of the stuff that would fall through the cracks, you know. Okay. So that's a good thing. Uh, we had a question come through, so we'll kind of divert for just a second. Um, I think this goes back to actually another video that you had just put out where you changed out a blower motor, an ECM blower motor. It looked like a, like a carrier style package unit, I think. And, mm -hmm. uh, Zachary Craig asks, why don't, or why are fan pullers bad? So I guess you didn't want to use a fan puller in that one, and you were, uh, you were uh, 
uh, toying with the people that use fan pullers, I believe, if I remember correctly. I'm never going to use a puller. It's just not Never used happen. one? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have them all, and I've seen them. I just don't see the time that it takes to set them up and tighten them down. It's not as bad on a blade, you know, because it's out flat in the open. But if you're reaching down inside the blower trying to tighten the, the bolts, um, I just mm -hmm. don't see that they're worth that time. That two or three minutes goes a long way towards getting it off. And I've challenged people with their comments. If you'll make a video showing me that you can get that blade off in four seconds with a puller, I mean, you can't even get it out of your truck in four seconds, much less mm -hmm. set it up. And then the thing I don't like is you're squeezing down on the hub, actually right. making it tighter. And I'm a mechanic in life. You know, I'm not, uh, not anything much brighter than that. I'm just a mechanic. Um, came from a lot of other stuff in my life that I do mechanic, mechanical stuff in, you know, cars, I'm a drag racer, etc. And it just doesn't make any sense to me to tighten down on the hub that I'm trying to get loose. And uh, I've tried a lot of ways of heating that shaft and um, the drill bit will heat it without warping anything or, or doing anything like that. And it's just the way I like to do it. Now, as soon as somebody makes a video like the videos I've made of that and they get it off with a, and it's a, you know, it's gotta be apples for apples. Can't be one that you could take and tap right off. But as soon as somebody <laughs> makes a video, you know, start to finish not fair. Yeah. clock running. I mean, as soon as a fair video is made that uh, shows that their puller is, you know, I mean, I've had all kinds of stuff twice as fast, half the time, a fraction of the time, you know, two minutes with a puller. And I mean, it takes you two minutes to set the puller up. Um, you know, as soon as somebody makes a video with their puller, then I'm going to say hats off. You're good with a puller. And I'm not. You know? What about that thing where you hit with, hit it with a hammer? You seen that puller where you like, you set it on there and it's like oh, smack, smack, smack. I and have. Then I've got problem solved. It's, it's got the shaft down through it. And I'm going to tell you right now, that thing will warp the fool out of, uh, uh, I've tried it. I mean, I've had it. I've got it. I have every puller you can imagine, and I just don't like them and don't need them. But that one is a little quicker to set up. The bolts are a little smarter, and you can do it with your service tool, you know, your ratchet. Mm -hmm. And it also has one that goes in place of a set bolt, you know, the set screw of the blower. That's right. I so remember one that. of the bolts goes in that, so you're kind of pulling on one more than the others that are tightened down. But that one, you know, an impact is a lot better than a steady push. But if it's a really tough one and you hold it up by that, then you're putting a lot more. Uh, the blower wheel is going to do this a lot of times after you get through and put your motor back in and go through all that mm -hmm. stuff. My way, there's zero chance of me distorting the blade or the wheel. And uh, I don't know. I'm just going to continue to do it. Plus, it gets quite a response. I mean, you can't. I don't care if you're criticizing me or what you're doing. If you're making a comment on my video, you're paying me to make that comment. So as long as you don't use any really nasty language, I'm all for it. I mean, you, you've got to click my video in order to criticize me, right? That's so, right. So I'm all for it. And when somebody shows me something better, I'm going to start doing that. When they show me something, I've pulled ideas from everybody. I had a contest one time of, you know, watch this video and name a tool that would help me. And I actually bought two tools because of it. Um, I bought that hmm. cutter, that shaft cutter that uh, I can't remember what it is, but it has a, a cutting wheel like you would stick on a drill, but it has a an arm, you know, you slide it down on the hub and you don't even have to crank it. You just slide it down and then you put your drill on the cutting wheel and it'll shorten the shaft down. Oh, I've never seen Without, that before. Oh, it's awesome. Um, somebody will name it in there in a minute. It's like the shaft blaster. That's it. Shaft blaster. You pull that thing up and look at it. It's quite cool. And so I bought that and the guy that suggested it, it would never claim his prize. He was going to get an S man or something. Um, Jeez. And another, an, oh yeah. Another thing I bought was the, 
Milwaukee something snake, power snake or puff snake or something. For the drains? Yeah. And it gives one puff. Like, oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. What is that thing? I mean, it really works. Uh, is it M12 or M18? It is. It's a 12. And 12. Wow. Yeah, it's an air snake. It's called an yeah, air snake. Yeah. I saw someone use that because they use it to obviously in plumbing, but they said sometimes it can cause a blowback problem if you're not careful. Well, but it only, it doesn't pressurize like you would with nitro. I don't believe in putting pressure on drain lines. I just don't. Yeah. I, well, I don't want to blow apart a 20 year old glue joint 20 foot away over the wall and not see it. So Another thing I don't believe in is trying to blow the clog out in the same direction that it built up and clogged in. So you've got to loosen it back the other way without blowing it into the coil and without blowing it all over somebody's attic. So if you're going to use pressure in reverse just to dislodge it and then flush it out, it should be a momentary. So that little snake, that air snake, you can set a dial on it for 5 PSI or 25 35 and you let it build up and when you pull the trigger like it doesn't run while you're doing it runs to build up that amount of pressure you dialed and then you pull the trigger and it just goes like that and works really cool um i need to publish the video of using it in my yard but the stuff sprayed all over my wife's legs and she got mad not mad but you know so you can't put that on and um yeah i probably will one day <laughs> but that was just on something else, not a drain line. But using it on a drain line, I would face it back in towards the house. And just that momentary puff, hopefully, would just dislodge the clog and not actually blow it out in their attic. And certainly not back into the coil. I mean, you certainly don't want to blow backwards on a drain line that's connected, right? You're just going to blow your garbage up into the coil. Right. And... Uh, uh, you know, I've got a little bitty tiny snake that works really good. It's called a smart snake. Are you writing all this down? I mean, that's totally cool. The smart snake is uh, a little tiny marble with one little tooth sticking off of it. So it's like a marble with one little tooth. And you turn it real slow. Well, hold on. Let me, let me get that right. It's a marble with a tooth. Stick a little tiny tooth. And, and so the tooth is offset and I've actually gotten it to go through several elbows from outside and usually it's that bottom elbow coming down or the first one that comes down from an attic that builds up you know the first big drop to an elbow and, and I've gotten it up in there and gotten it to loosen quite a few and then once it's loose I can use my Milwaukee transfer pump and just use all the pan out of the you know the water out of the pan to just flush the drain out um yeah a couple of things i haven't developed yet and i wish it would just develop for me so i don't have to do it is a remote switch for my battery operated vacuum outside um i'd like to have a battery operated vacuum by milwaukee with about four times the suction that that one has and I'd like to have a remote switch for a secondary camera outside. I think that's doable. Uh, you know, I, I think, where, yeah, sure. Where it I is, don't yeah. have to let it sit out there for five minutes while I'm taking my slow self up the ladder and up the stairs. And, and then I don't have so much footage to edit to where I could just hit a remote and it turns the camera on, blast out the drain or flush out the drain. Getting it lodged loose is the trick. Once it's loose, then you can flush all the garbage out and, and there's your money shot. People love to see all that vomit coming out of the drain, you know. And, um, they do, actually. That's, those, that's weird, but they those do, yes. Been, have been the more successful videos for me have been the, well, the ones that say hack job, butcher job, sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> those have done well. And then also what's done well is the drain <laughs> ones that were really bad. The drain ones. Those two have done great. And... Uh, the ones nobody wants to hear it but when it says it's hard to stop a train in the in the title those get a those get a lot of views because but, people are you know they're ready to come back at you with their comment about it is that what you think a lot of them are and a lot of them are uh, you know it's just a popular slogan that i don't know maybe youtube suggests it more because it's a uh, 
a flagged word on their end. I don't know. I almost wish I knew more. I almost wish I could work for them a while and learn their system. But by the time I do that, they'll go away and something mo <laughs> Mojo will it. take over or something else will take over, you know, of all these little things, these shorts. What yeah. What is that one yeah. called that I hate? TikTok. I hate that. TikTok is, is I hate it, man. the devil. I hate it. It it's, takes it's over no good. your phone. If you don't have the app, It'll take over your safari, and it'll never cut off. It's a uh, it's you, it's it's a black hole. It really you, is a black hole. Open it, and it's still playing. You have to type to another address and go to some other site just to get it off your, you know. But my wife and kids, they're all hooked on it. But they have the app, so you can just close the app, and it goes away. And they tell me, that's just I don't know. I just I don't like it. It's and not it, good. It's it a slow erosion me. of our society. It, it's definitely Honestly. it's definitely pretty bad that in video games if we could do away with that i think we'd do pretty good but i think a lot of people would lose their jobs if we did away with the video game industry so i don't think that's going anywhere but it it has not helped a thing no i mean i think how much time it takes just to check those things when you get engrossed in one of those things think of all the time that you've lost just staring at stuff well, I've done that just in other ways, but yeah, that, that video <laughs> game thing. Yeah, I, I guess mean, so, yeah. I still, uh, I don't know. I would like to think the things we do are a little bit more productive than uh, shooting at a fake target with a fake friend that's wherever else and yelling at your headset. And, um, you know, I finally just dumped all that out of my house and said, sorry, you grow up and buy your own, but it's not allowed here. Gave away a whole bunch of stuff. We still have a Wii over there because it's interactive. You have to do stuff. And do you play the Wii? I do. They're goofy games like the golf and the, you know, those things that are really goofy and they interact physically with other people. You can't really get on Black Ops or Call of Duty, which I think that's the devil myself. I hate Call of Duty and stuff. And, mm hmm I don't hate the people that play it. I just hate the fact that they can. I just wish well, I, I would love to see a video of you playing like Wii Sports Resort oh, or something. I ain't doing a little that. music comes on. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. And, you know, you're trying to figure out how you change the hair color on your avatar or whatever. That'd be, that'd be great. Oh, my gosh. The avatars. They've made some avatars of me to make fun. The kids, you know. You, you don't and, say. No, and I'll come back, and <laughs> there I am, you know, and, and you know, there's nothing I can do about it. They're... What's that supposed to be? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's pretty obvious. They, I can't, you know, they haven't, they haven't made any that I could actually deny. Yeah. yeah no. So, you know, it's been a lot of fun, though. I mean, we just do it momentarily here and there. I mean, what I haven't done is top golf. Have you been? I haven't. Um, I, a few years ago, whenever uh, Ralph wrote me into going, yeah, he didn't really write me into going to going down to Atlanta for that AHR. Uh, the Sporling guys invited me to go to Top Golf with them, and I was like, "No, nah, I'm not really the kind of person who likes gregarious events." So I was like, "I just rather just go home." But uh, they were going to Top Golf, and everybody talks like it's a lot of fun. But you know, I, I'm I, gonna I, try. I don't do stuff like that. I'm boring. I'm gonna. I'm going to try it. No, I don't think you're boring. You're just creative. You'd rather be doing something rather than not doing something. Yeah, right kinda, here. Yeah. It's just kind of more who you are. Well, even if you're by yourself, you at least would rather. I mean, I've never met you, but I've figured out some of you. You'd rather, you'd rather achieve something than just uh, spin your wheels in gravel. Oh, yeah. I, well, you got I that take, right. I take you as that type. Yeah, I'm always moving forward somewhere, usually on yeah. my own. But uh, I mean, it's, it's I just, the way I am. I live for the opportunity to hit the gravel for 30 seconds, you know. But <laughs> never really. Like I say, it's been here for quite a few years in our town, and I haven't tried it yet. But I was going to ask so that Greenville actually has one of those. Yeah, and I have not been, but and and missed a few. I mean, trains gone twice, and I was supposed to. And there just was something more important to go do that, you know, customers are more important than me. So without well, that, them, that's true. You know, yeah, without yeah. them, there ain't no me. So um, I've always that's just right. had too much to do. 
Now, if they would go in the off season or go in the winter or something, but uh, yeah, the last time was sometime in July, and we had a a meeting, you know, or, or a whatever it was, like a class, uh, bringing that link and the X products and stuff, the the new stuff that's coming that that it's just not that big a deal to me, but I go anyway. Um, well, we got to talk about that too once you're done, I guess. Yeah. Oh, and nope. let me tell you that uh, if you were, if you, if well, they would never do this because I know my family. But earlier today, earlier today, probably not ten miles from you, my wife and son were playing miniature golf in Greenville. That I'll go and do if they were at mm -hmm. Frankie's Fun Park. That's or, exactly where they were. They were at Frankie's. Yeah. Well, see, they have go karts there, so if the redneck comes out. I can go over there and realize that I shouldn't have. And then I can come back and do another course. But now Frankie's is tough. Um, a couple of those are really tough. Now we do that. I, I mean, two or three times a year and, and take the kids and do, you know, I mean, man, if you can't, if you can't do that, I feel sorry for you. Yeah. We, we went to one of those and I, we took, it wasn't in Greenville. It was, um, I don't remember where it was, actually. It's in one of our many adventures from my son's college tour or whatever. And we went to one of the Frankies. Actually, I think it was when we went to go look at Virginia Tech because I met Curtis oh, while we were wow. up there. And uh, because evidently Virginia Tech has a strong uh, ROTC program that I never knew about. They have like this whole section of the college that's sectioned off for ROTC. Uh, so we went to Frankie's and we took all the kids up there and they just had a ball. Even Jackson, four-year-old. He had a he had a ball. He was just he's, playing games and was losing. Now. Yeah, he's four now. He's uh yeah. he's in pre K now. So. We picked up when John was six or seven, we picked we gave him a five no matter what, and we finally would pick it up and let him try. But you know, he was a good sport and kept on and he does pretty good now. He's twenty one now, but he's a senior wow. senior at uh oh Clemson. Um <laughs> I remember one time you got me pretty good. I was, I was trying to make my presence known in one of your shows, and I was being ignored. <laughs> I was being ignored more than I wanted to be ignored. So, um, yeah, I got that problem. So I was typing everything you would type in the chat, like no matter what you typed, I would type the same thing. <laughs> I don't I remember type, this. Oh funny. yeah, oh yeah, and you got me pretty good, and you said Clemson sucks. And so I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't type that. And, <laughs> I couldn't do it. And I, you know, I'm glad you didn't say, I mean, but if I would have said that, then you would have stepped it up a notch and said, you know, train, uh, Goodman is better than train or something. I don't know. I can't type that. So, well, I think to get me to stop nagging or something you might have. But anyway, you got me pretty good that time. That's been the biggest, you know. I always enjoyed that. that. And you, you know what? When you said that, you know, I think I do have a faint memory of writing the Clemson sucks thing because I, I sort of because I was that. typing your. See, I wasn't part of the show. I wasn't being talked about. I wasn't having any fun at all. I was <laughs> taking my turn to sit and watch y'all have fun. You know, I mean, I was not doing what I should have been doing. That's right. So what I should have been doing was just chilling out and letting you know that show be that show and. I'll do one later. But instead, I was trying to be obnoxious. I think one time you said, yes, Ted, we see you. And I thought, oh, man, that was a burn. You know, I can't say anything back. And later I was typing what you type, and you finally got enough of it and said Clemson sucks. That stopped it. That stopped me from doing it. I always enjoyed stuff like that. You know, over the years, just people in the chat, they're creative. It made I don't call them trolls, but sometimes trolls, they're kind of funny because of the way they do it. Yeah. It's so over the top. It's like, this is hilarious. You know, and you kind of play around with them. You know, I always yeah. had fun when we sparred about train back in the day. I thought it was fun. No, it, it, it was. But, and then sometimes the name cloning thing, you know, that was fun too, until you're actually a channel owner trying to help make it and you get used to that income and it's part of your, you know, what, what a lot of the chatters don't, and I don't mean to call them chatters, but a lot of the viewers chatters don't realize is working on YouTube in any capacity whatsoever is time and work. Um, serious time and work. Now you put a lot more into it than I do, but it's, 
as you can tell by my ruffian videos. But I mean, so once I started to actually get income from it and I'm counting on that to to pay me for all my time I'm putting in and then people start spoofing the name, then I get upset about it. all of a sudden I don't like it anymore. But other than that, it's been all in good fun. Yeah, I think I, I still see that from time to time. Um, yeah, Mikey Wipes. I saw that. <laughs> Mikey that's, Wipes. I haven't seen that before. That's, that's funny. bad, man. That's bad. I've seen man. anti-DYI. I just assumed yeah, that was Joe. I assumed that is. was Joe making it all is. of them. It is Joe. <laughs> There's only Joe and nine other people even on YouTube. But yeah, I mean, um, that that's one's funny. his. And, and uh but he's uh, conservative with it and just has a little fun when, you know, he doesn't try to trash my world or nothing. But, but uh, no, there's quite a few that, that, you know, I think take it too far. And, and, but I really can't blame anybody. I started that. Nobody was doing that. And I, way back 12 years ago or 10 years ago when I was fighting with John Israel, when I first, I didn't even have a channel. I went and made, and I used a capital, no, I used a lowercase L for the capital I and made, you know, Israel, whatever, and then took his uh, avatar, <laughs> and I went around on I remember people. that, so I didn't, yeah. I didn't, that was you. Okay. That was bad. I started the whole thing, and I went around on other people's uh, videos commenting. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And... John took it serious, buddy. I mean, he was mad. And I, so I, I could just, imagine, I, yeah. I, yeah, that was below the belt. I mean, I, 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 I got back. I, you know, I deserve some of that coming back. He never was really invested enough to pay it back to me. He just blew up, you know. I think one time he did call me on the phone and tell me that uh, if gas wasn't so expensive, he would drive up here and whip my you-know-what. It that must have been early that, on, though. It was. No, it was. But it did get that far. And um, there's been several cases where, you know, I don't have anything against him. I apologize. He's apologized. You know, like I say, that's, that's all. You know, as soon as I'm perfect, I'm going to stop, uh, start expecting others to be perfect. So I tried to grow up in the last 10 years on YouTube. Socially, you can learn a few things. Yeah, what I realized on YouTube is that no matter what happened before you came on YouTube, like just you as an anybody, uh, once you get on here in this environment, you go through phases. You, start you go over. through phases. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's, it's almost psychological too because yeah. you know you you think you're mature and a grown up, and all of a sudden you get in this situation. And you said, "Well, I'm gonna type this guy's a loser," you know, and you know what does that do? You know. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I would do anything to meet some of these guys. Like, I wish so bad that I could have went to that thing y'all were at. Um, yeah, we'll be back plenty of time, so I'm, I'm sure yeah, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, and, you know, I'll tell you, I really remember the days where I got my second truck, and I had me and one guy, and then we had a helper. And if I, if I was right there again, I think I made more net money. Now, I didn't own as much stuff, and I didn't have as much big-looking stuff. But the net money was probably as much as it's ever been when it was me and a couple of guys. Of course, I was in my 30s, and I can't do that anymore. But I think I made um, more. You know, the gross numbers weren't big. Right. But but I really think I took home as much or more money in those days. What would you... Uh... What would you do differently since the apparatus costs so much as time goes by? Like now, you know, the apparatus might cost twice as much and you make the same thing. W would you do anything differently? Well, Zach, to be honest with you, um, I'm afraid that if I, uh, and I don't want to open a can of worms on YouTube, but if I wanted to try to look back and change and regret things the way the Lord has led my life, I'm afraid that that would mean my decisions had taken over. And I promise you that I could probably put it in the ditch a lot worse by myself. So I'm going to yeah. say that I'm, I'm very blessed. And even like I had a really bad motorcycle crash in 1994, and that was the last time I've ever been drunk in my life. Um, things bad have happened. And the next day, I wish I could take them back. But looking back now 
at a 33 year business stretch, I would be fearful to change anything because um, I think I've learned from all of it. And, and to focus forward is probably what I think would be the best plan for me and anybody else. But, but I will tell you though, there, there were some hardships and mistakes and, uh, um, you know, I strayed from train one time, but honestly, I've probably been too loyal to something that wasn't quite as loyal to me. Um, that's the mechanic in me doing that. Not, not necessarily the, um, you know, the corporate world is something else, man. I'll tell you, they really are. They'll chew you right up. I mean, you're, you're nothing to them, but, you know, looking back, probably the biggest, you know, I can't really call them regrets, but the biggest mistakes I made were thinking that this amount of growth was, you know, going to be a piece of cake and turned out to be quite overwhelming. And I tell you what, the, the bottom line is I missed too many soccer games. I missed too many, I mean, you know, too much time I was telling myself I'm devoted to my family by working to death to get them some extra money. Whereas I'm pretty sure my daughter would have rather had me at every game than had maybe a few years newer car than she could have had. I'm sure, you know, that I could have put more time into the family and the family life and put that priority wise ahead of time. So I don't suggest anybody work 60, 70 hour work weeks. I just don't suggest you do that because time flies by and you look back at life and, uh, you know, I should have been at all those soccer games. You can't tell that's a pet peeve that bothers me, can you? I, you know, I, I share the same thing. I mean, my kids would always say you're gone all the time. You work all the time. Um, that hurts. It, it, it does hurt. Um, but let me ask you this, Zach. Did it hurt you more later than it did right there at the moment? Because that's, that's my story. You know, it, it, it hurts more later. I, I agree with that. It hurts more later, and I think that is because later is when you realize that your time's run out in that area and you can't go back. And when you're there, it's almost like when I was quitting smoking. I was like, well, I'll quit next week. I got plenty of time before it takes its health toll on me. Yeah. So I'll quit next week. And I, and I think that's what it is. I think in retrospect, you're like, well, I wasted the time. It's over. I can't change the decision. So now I'm full of regret as of before, you know, I could have changed it any time. So I'll just make the company a little bit more successful and then I won't have to do all this. And then it just never happens. Yeah. There's no finish line. So at some point you, you have to be thankful and blessed for the position you're at and where you're at and who you are. And, and, uh, you know, uh, if, if you're, uh, if you're a Christian and you believe that these are blessings, you don't believe these are really total pat yourself on the back achievements. And, or, or at least I don't, um, because I remember back when, um, when I was in total control and I believed that there was no higher power whatsoever. And I didn't believe God was influential in my life. I remember those days and, uh, it was pretty bad. Wasn't, yeah. Wasn't it? You know, coincidentally, I took away the alcohol and, and you know, uh, focused a little more, um, you know, my Christianity and, and my beliefs. And all of a sudden, things got better. And, uh, you know, that's been my story. Now, I, I've still regret some things and I still regret missing all those soccer games. And that soccer games is a example, you know. Um, right. Yeah. Going to the lake, doing whatever, going on the trip. Like you mentioned a minute ago that your family. So do, were you not able to go with them to Frankie's here the other day or was that today? They, they were there earlier today. Um, uh, and it's just one of those things where, uh, well, first I had to do this, obviously. And it's something that it wasn't like I did this and I couldn't have just moved it or something or I could have called you and said it. It was something that I wanted to do. It's, it's going to be hard to explain. Uh, 
Well, you don't have to. I just no, no. I, I want to. I want to serious. because I figure like these these are lessons that you know people go through that maybe someone else could say. Okay, I see that. Maybe I can you know whatever they can see it. Uh, when my son got dropped off, and uh, I'm gonna I'm I'll encapsulate this real fast because you know the story. When my son went to his camp, there was uh, like some bad stuff that happened at the camp uh, when he went to the Citadel camp, and some of the people that were running the camp were relieved of their duties because there was like a hazing issues. So he was really affected by that. And so he ended up transferring cause he had a full scholarship transferring it to Furman, which is in Greenville. And, uh, yeah. because he had gone to the school and he loved the school. It was really nice. He just, uh, at the time he wasn't clear on what he really needed. Uh, mm -hmm. so he's been at Furman for a couple of weeks and my wife was going to go visit, uh, because when we dropped him off, uh, you know, of course, there was an emotional moment for him. My wife was emotional. You know, her youngest, or not her youngest, but her firstborn's going away. Right. Yep. So they were all crying, and I'm, I'm sitting there, you know, <laughs> not crying, but like, I'm going to miss you too, even though that I'm not crying. Yeah. Um, and said, we'll come back and visit you, because we were concerned that he was going to have issues because of that experience. But as it turns out, and you'll like this, uh, they went out earlier to the fun park because she wanted to go back and visit him. I'm like, we got to cut the cord. He's got to be on his own for a little while, but you know, yeah. difference of opinion. Uh, so she went to visit him. And then this evening she texts me and goes, he ditched me. He went to go with <laughs> be with his friends in the dorm <laughs> and hang out. Yeah. He went to go hang out with his dorm friends. And now she's watching a movie by herself. <laughs> well, well, but still, should she, is she not happy about that? somewhat happy she, about she is happy about it yeah. it's 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 like bittersweet because you know yeah. what's worse than you know having a son that won't adapt to college it's having a son that adapts perfectly and leaves you behind and i guess i'll catch you later mom you know yeah it's over yeah he, he's gone uh, yeah, well, and I, i'm so proud of him i mean i'm happy for him no that's what i'm saying that's the reason you didn't you know men are a little less a little more logical and a little less emotional i mean it, 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 things like that you know but like I did cry when my son got married. That tore me up. Man. Yeah. That just, you know, at, it was all at the end. It was all beautiful. Everything was happening. And they're inside waiting to go walk down that line of everybody throwing stuff at them and getting in the car and leaving. And uh, I just, man, that, you know, they came up and I was the only one in there. And they walked up to talk to me. And it just, you know, that moment just shook me up for a minute. But for the most part, you know, the women do the crying. And I'm like, hey, this is good. Kick the boy in the butt on his way out the door, you know, that kind of stuff. And, yeah, um, you know, that, uh, yeah, that's the way life is. But I'm glad I, I almost said something. And I said, you know, Zach really doesn't appreciate people mouthing off about his personal life. He really doesn't. So I'm not going to say anything. But I wanted to say, dude, the Citadel is, uh, you know, pretty You're right. Pretty, you were right. Well, I, oh, I didn't say anything, but I... I, I well, I just, internally, you were right. Well, I don't think it would have done any good for me to have said anything. If I really it, it wouldn't have done any good for me to tell him that at the time. Um, uh, you it, know, wouldn't it, have, uh, it wouldn't have helped anybody at all for me to say anything about it. Now, had you asked me, I would have said, well, actually, my brother-in-law went there, and actually, we know a couple things and a couple people... And I would have offered that to you, but from what you're telling me, they've ratcheted things up quite a bit, but that's just kids these days. I mean, that's just, it's getting worse. And apparently yeah. it got really out of hand. Um, and I, I don't know all the details of it because when he was there, I was attributing it to him. Like you need to, you need to man up and just handle this because uh, you know, what did, what did you expect it to be? I mean, you're going into the military. It's not like when you get to the military, it's going to be like all sunshine and happiness because it's not going to be that way. I mean, it's going to be rough, but evidently it was over the top. I don't know how over the top because I wasn't there, but evidently whenever they relieve people of duty, that, that must have been over the top so much so that the Citadel guys thought it was over the top. The guys oh, at yeah. top. Oh, yeah. So. We've heard about it from other sources. It was a big deal. I hate that Andrew is Andrew's your mm -hmm. oldest. Yeah, yeah I, I hate right. that. I hate he was there. I hate he was part of that, and I hope that now he's happy. Well, obviously he's okay because he said, "Hey, I'll catch you later, Mom. I got to yeah. go." With, yeah. So obviously <laughs> it's a good thing, 
And uh, that's kind of the same point that I was saying. Yeah, I look back with some regrets, but I'd be afraid to change them. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. When you were saying that, uh, it's generally how I feel about it is similar. It's that uh, if you look back with the regrets, you might have that feeling of regret, but I do believe you're placed on a path that not it doesn't necessarily go smoothly, but it leads you where you need to go. So maybe some of those regrets are only reflecting back on something you had to go through to get where you are. So, and that makes it easier to deal with it because that means yeah, you had to go through it basically. It's, so it's kind of a comfort. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the road's bumpy when you're on it, but when you look back and you got your new tires and all, you kind of feel like you might be a little smarter because of it. Um, yeah, I think what, so. What's going on over there in the chat? Is everybody uh, tired of hearing they, about my personal life? They all left. Oh, I don't blame them. There's Maybe. four people left, and most of them are just people who walked away from their computer. Oh, and what, left one of them's it me. there. Where it <laughs> yeah, would, and left it where on. It would look polite. <laughs> no, uh, there, were, there was some stuff that appeared here. Um, let's see. I have a question relating to HVAC shop talk. What was the hardest on-call to deal with? Is that on-call, I don't know how you define on-call, because someone like I mean, you or I would be on-call well, for polite. eternity. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't time. know what, what did, you, did you ever get like a, a middle of the night one or anything like that? Anything memorable? You know, I'm going to tell you what I, what I see is that young people are different patient wise. Now, of course, we've always had renters that are less patient than homeowners because mm -hmm. they feel entitled. You know, I pay rent. You need to get my stuff fixed now, but young people have grown up really what i'll blame it on is computers computers have taken away everybody's patience you push a button and amazon comes to the door and it fills this mindset and our fast-paced life which i'm willing to go along with it i'm not complaining or crying about it but they've lost their patience and there's people that call at 11 o'clock at night 10 30 11 o'clock at night and say you know do you have anybody on call and you know i want to say well you know, if your 80 year old mother-in-law is on an oxygen tube and having trouble, you know, I'm on my way. Or if your kid is handicapped or sick, or if you're having a real problem, I'm on my <laughs> Ted, way. You know, they are, you know, but, there's all that house is full of handicapped children. But you get over there, <laughs> you get over there and they have two systems and one of them is fine, but they, they can't <laughs> go upstairs because, uh, you, you know, that the thing is, um, I learned to disguise those questions to ask you know, before I say I have anybody on call or not. And, and I'll just say, you know, well, we're full tonight, but I can get somebody to you pretty quick tomorrow, but that's the best I can do. But I'm just astonished that somebody, like I'll answer the phone, but I think they should be saying, hey, I, I know it's late. I just wanted to get in line instead of, you know, can you, can you get over here right now? Yeah. Um, now when it's 20 degrees, yeah, we get the calls, and yes, we will go. Um, yeah. I mean, the thing is, you know, and, and I'll ask those questions still, but if you have absolutely no heat source, no fireplace, no space heater, no nothing, no anything, and you're about to have to pick up and pack up and go to a motel, and you're worried your pipes are going to, like I say, if it's 20 degrees, I draw the line. And I'll work all I can and I'll go if one of my guys can't or we'll all go, you know, we'll try. But um, how often know, does that happen? A couple times a year. So it's not it's not bad, but, you know, it seems like it. Does. Now, the other thing where they're just unrealistic with their expectations, in my opinion, that happens fairly often. There's been several of those this summer. But. As far as the one, I think you're asking how long does it happen where I actually will go. That's right. probably just a couple times a year. I mean, I'm not in the refrigeration business, so I don't have to go save your $100,000 worth of beef at Bilo, you know. Well, mm -hmm. Bilo's gone, but, but I'm not, you know. Uh, but if you have a story, and I can tell by your tone of voice that you're not just trying to play a game and get your winning, you know, if you have an elderly person, I'm, I'm a little, you know, my parents are both gone. So I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty sensitive to that. If you have somebody and, 
But I'm going to tell you, though, this may slip us off the subject for a second, but I have heard more excuses or reasons about my dog is old. And really? it's hot. Hmm. Uh, but dude, I hear at least five or six to one on that. I would be fine, but I'm worried about my dog. He's 14 years old and he's panting and laying on the floor. I have heard more of that than I'm worried about me or my child. Now, the newborn thing or the eight-month-old pregnant wife, sorry, man, I'm going. That's bad. I'm going. Uh, if you got a newborn child in the house and you have no air conditioning, that is bad. Now, I mm -hmm. will go through the questions first. And if you have an upstairs and downstairs unit and only one of them is off, I think you can make do. Set up Absolutely. camp. Set up camp, whatever. Um, but if you don't, and, and the other thing is, if you have an eight-month pregnant wife or seven, you know, whatever. If your wife is pregnant and there's no air um, and part of the reason for that is, is my wife finds out about it and finds out that I didn't go, you know, that could be a problem too. So there are those few things that I'm going or somebody's going, but it's so not. whenever, uh, whenever they call, it's like, we well, have a newborn and the, and the husband is calling. Do you say, well, are you the father? Yeah. I don't... <laughs> because if you're not the father, I mean, you should be less concerned about this. Uh, I don't know, man. Is I, that part of the question? No, just... I, I raised two stepkids <laughs> myself, and I raised them just like they were my own, you know. But, um, but, yeah, it does. What's that guy? You are the well, Maury or something? What's his? Oh name? yeah, yeah. The um, Maury is it Maury Povich who Povich? does that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You are not the baby daddy. You know, he reads that. Yeah, he reads that thing. <laughs> that's he's that's what he's famous for you know then the people are you know the guy's always super happy and it's super depressing for society that he's so excited that he's not the father but yeah then it's probably better that he's not at this at least well, at that current point in time yeah um they uh i i have a little sympathy for the now here's the thing if you tell me you know okay thank you but let me talk to my wife and it's about the money i know you're full of baloney nine times out of 10. But if you tell me, hey, man, I, I, my wife is eight months pregnant. I got to try to get, you know, I got to try to, all right. Uh, I got some feelings for the man at that point. Um, and if you have a two month old at home, uh, I've been there and I just wouldn't want to be there with no air or heat for that matter. Or heat. Yeah, or I heat. agree with that. Yeah, yeah I agree yeah, with that. that. The infant that just got home um, and the massively pregnant wife that might kill the husband if he doesn't do something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to react to that probably quicker than anything. But uh, I've heard the I'm worried about my dog more than anything else. How often do you have a customer that's new that you're not familiar with calling in anyway? Multiple times a day. So you get every that many brand new day. customers, really? Every single day. And I advertise less than anybody in this town. Where do they come from? Well, you do remember I'm old, right? I mean, I, start, I started in 1989. So it's not that, you know, hey, we're the greatest. It's just... Uh, Word you know, travels. Yeah. 1989 was when I started, so... Um, I advertise very little, but they come from, um, obviously the old fashioned ways, you know, neighbors, but we have this new thing and they're going to start charging for it really soon. Now they charge for upgrades now, but it's still basically free. It's called next door. I know you're familiar with that. I get their emails every day. Yeah. yeah. Neighborhood apps next door and stuff like that. That's pretty strong. Um, and referrals are pretty strong, but basically just a better business bureau rating, a strong Angie rating, uh, used to be Angie's list and, and strong home advisor. I hold records on both of those in my area. In You're my still area. on home advisor. Yeah. I have a perfect five star since 2009. Nice. So you, you back from what, what was it before? I can't remember. 
never had nothing but a perfect five star on there. No, no, but what was it was different. It was a different company name before. Before oh, Home yeah. Advisor, Service it was called Magic. Service, Service Magic. Magic. Yeah, there you go. But it's not Home Advisor anymore. Now it's Angie, and it's all one. Angie took it over. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's all one. And I tell you, I keep it turned off. I keep the leads turned off most of the time. So it's really hard to dig those reviews out, but I do hold a record there since 2009 oh. when I when I first joined as Service Magic is what it was. And it was great. I mean, it, the, the leads were like 40 bucks a piece, 30, 40, and 45, you know, depending if it was exclusive or if it was a match to four or five people. And you mm -hmm. had to be really quick and call it the immediate time you got the text to win and and you had to learn <laughs> to win i like yeah, that that's it man to get yeah, the job it's a game man. Call. so you had to look at a 10 a, a, a group of 10 and figure did i get five or six or seven of those because if you looked at just one that you know i called them immediately they didn't answer and somebody was already on the way or i called them and it was fake and they said no i didn't type mm -hmm. anything i just wanted to see what was on the next screen and they still bam, bam, forty-five bucks. You know, so if you look at one, you're you're not going to play their game successfully. And uh, I don't know if you knew this about me, but I'm pretty stubborn. And so, I kind of, yeah, I don't know where. Uh, hmm. You know, I know it's not very evident, but I'm pretty stubborn and hard-headed wow. and determined is a nicer word. But windows uh, into Ted's inner soul. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we better we better come up with something interesting or these guys really are going to leave their fake numbers on computers on and <laughs> walk off half of them are no. taking naps they might be playing tic-tac-toe in the chat no no uh, home advisor is something that comes up all the time because people talk about they want lead generation services and stuff and i was part of home advisor and i, I did really good on home advisor i did great on service magic and home advisor really good but now yeah. an exclusive lead is one hundred and forty dollars. That's For insane. One, That's way more. One lead. Now a market match type thing, which means they gave it to four or five, and whoever got the job got it. Those are like eighty dollars. And that's way more than it was. You know, it used and, to be. Uh, I only did the service ones. I, I didn't do the install ones. I just did oh, service okay. leads. Service is cheaper. Yeah, yeah. but even the install ones were like 40, 50 bucks when I was doing it. So it's gone up quite a bit. Yeah, and those are the only ones. I even picked the cherries. I even only called that back. Uh, wow. What I learned to do was I learned to, you know, once, once I built up that five-star rating, I learned to not have to be in a rush. I'd go look at the address and I could tell by where the house is. Yeah, I'm not going to fight for that one. And then I'd look at it and it was a house on a golf course. I'd call them up and say, uh, hey, I live on a golf course and, <laughs> you know, whatever. I'd talk them into Top of the morning the to you. Yeah, talk them into <laughs> giving me the job. But, um, but <laughs> like the, the biggest part of the success is that if you're old and been around forever, you get calls every day. And I do yeah. get several. We call those cold calls, meaning it's a cold call. And that's even a term on the work order cold that means we've never been there they don't know us we know them that means put your shoe covers on um, for a while it meant wear your mask but now it's just have a mask in your pocket if they show up at the door with one okay i'll put mine on other than that i'm i'm over that i'm past that but, yeah you know if they have one on i will put mine on um i don't think it's doing anything but um a sign of respect to them Oh, exactly. They're okay. the ones paying us. But uh, right, and the shoe cover yeah. thing, I personally just preach the shoe covers, but I don't use them. I just kick my, everybody makes fun of my shoes because I wear those, you know, Sperry's or Timber, you know, those leather dock siders. I don't know what you call them. We used to call them frat shoes. I think yuppie, I know what you're talking about, Sperry's. Yuppie, yuppie yeah. shoes. And I just kick those off really easy. And people appreciate that. But I look down, if they're wearing shoes in their house, that's a little different. If they don't have any on, yeah, that's a Southern thing. You know, not many people wear shoes in their house. I wear shoes all the time. That's weird. Everywhere in your house? Everywhere in my house, I wear shoes. You have small yeah. kids. 
Yeah, well, so, plus I, yeah. I go in and out a lot. I do a lot of stuff outside. I enjoy being right. outdoors. So if I had to take them off and on all the time, it would be a hassle. But you have small kids, and that's a silly battle to try to, you know, you just don't want to die on that hill. Absolutely. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Um, uh, I do want to say, because there's a chat coming through. I know it came through twice. It's a guy who's asking how long uh, do we, but I'll defer to you because it'd probably be a little bit better from you. How long do you keep, he says vans, but like work vehicles, how long do you keep them in the field? As long as they still run together or what's the oldest one too? Okay, Why? there's the question. Listen, there's a video and I think it's still public and I made it for Joe because Joe and I, I really like Joe, but he and I have argued a few times, and I think we'd like to argue with it, Joe Shearer. Um, it's fun. Joe's good at Joe ha, is opinionated and likable all at the same time. I, I love Joe, but yeah, he will definitely what? go back and forth with you oh, on yeah. stuff. And another thing is, um, when it comes to HVACs, he's actually very smart. Absolutely. Very yeah. smart. I've got my specialty areas, you know, like zoning and 20 seer stuff and some of the train stuff that, that I feel like I'm a contender with anybody. But there are things like testing a compressor, understanding the troubleshooting of this. There's some things that Joe's techno, uh, technical um, abilities are, are just over my head. And, and, you know, I've got a lot of respect for him. He's a lot of fun and I really like him. But I made a video just for him because we go back and forth over Ford and Chevrolet. Now, I think, oh gosh, yeah. well, I think he was doing that just for fun because he's not anti Chevrolet, but he may have been pretending to be just to shake my chain. And Absolutely. I believe that could be the case. Well, uh, can you blame him? Anyway, it's fun. I mean, it's just, it's yeah. just, it's fun. So I made a video uh, and, and I gave the van away. We peeled the wrap off. But I went out and I made the video. I went out, I turned on the key and it lit up. It said 563 or something like that. Thousand. Wow. Cranked it up and said, here it goes. It's driving out of here. I got my money's worth out of that one. Now, I will admit that I think three transmissions in that period of time, but that was the original motor. And if you change your oil properly, uh, that half million mile stuff is possible. Now, it doesn't always happen. Mechanical failures happen. It just never happened to me there. But to answer the question, I have retired a Chevrolet work van at 563000 and it drove out of the parking lot, and the girl I gave it to sold it to 50, for 1500 bucks, And it drove around a lot after that. We could still recognize it, but the wrap was gone. Now, a couple other things. I have a van right now with 300 and something on it that's in the field. Wow. My van that I drive is at like 239, 236, 230 something. My van that I drive. So I don't even have any. Now I'm into these access vans. I'm really hooked on them. I got three of them. Where the window is made out of a window van and the sides pop up. Oh, okay. I was about to say, I don't, I don't know what an access van is, it's but okay, I got Chevy you. Chevy Access, and it was a very expensive option, and nobody would buy it because the shelves face out on the top and they face in on the bottom, and, you know, the hatch is open. There's three of them, two on the drivers and one on the passenger, and mm -hmm. they made it out of window vans, and you hit a button on your fob, and the hatch opens, so you don't have to climb up in the van and get anything, So it's or, or the most used stuff. That's really nice. nice. Yeah. I got three of those, but I don't have anything under 200 in the house right now. Nothing. Is that the way it's always been? You just run them to the end of the line? Just till they just ain't worth it. Till, oh, well, honestly, that one was a 2003 model. And I felt like that I was going to have to start putting money into making it look better somehow. And it was actually so old, I didn't think I could achieve that. So that's why I gave it away. But I could have put, oh, Lord, who knows how many times I put brakes on it. But I had put, yeah. you know, ball joints, bushings, the whole control arms, A-frames, whatever you want to call them, three transmissions. You know, I had put bunches of money in the thing. The AC quit and something else was going on with it. And I was just finally like, you know what, I've got to stop giving that thing money. So I gave it away. 
but it yeah. was 563,000 miles. Um, I don't think anybody else would do that, but I have that automotive mechanical background, you know, with the race cars and whatever. And I, you know, grew up as a kid building engines and stuff, or, you know, rebuilding engines. And uh, so that answers that question. You know, yeah, obviously I drive them till the wheels are ready to fall off. Well, it's it's interesting because a, as a successful business owner, you see a lot of guys, they they get newer stuff. They get newer stuff, and uh, part of that is, I don't I don't know, just the the prestige. There's a prestige factor that they they you see they have nice stuff. It's it's dressed up. Their personal cars are real nice. I mean, you have nice cars, but but you're a car guy. It's almost like there's a the difference world, though. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a difference between what what I'm talking about and what you are because you're like, uh, and I understand that because you know, classic cars that, that's a different type of thing, I think. But the, uh, yeah, I, but you don't. I, I thought you might be the kind of guy who got a new van, but it's interesting that you just ride them to the wheels fall off. I'm not gonna do it. I mean, if I do, in no time, it's worth whatever I would have paid to buy it with a hundred thousand miles. I don't think I've ever started under a hundred. Really? Okay, so that's where you purchased them. Never, never started under a hundred. Now, my custom, not with work vehicles, never started mm -hmm. under a hundred. The family van, I think, I the last one I bought had like seventy nine or eighty or something on it. You know, that's really interesting. Seventy nine thousand. Yeah, yeah. So that's interesting to me because obviously you could get a a new car if you wanted to, but yeah. you choose to. I guess there's a reason why people have. What they have is because they make wise financial decisions. Well, my wife's car had 8,000 miles on it when we bought it. Wife's car. And she didn't want it. I she didn't it. want it? No. She didn't want a Mercedes. Interesting. It's expensive, Mercedes. But and, you uh, wanted the Mercedes. No, I wanted her to have it. Oh, you wanted her to have it. Okay, because yeah. you're, you know, Mercedes. I can't fix it. I yo, Oh, no, I can't work on that car. It's a total different world. It's just that, um, well, and plus the chance came along. No, no, I would never buy a $100,000 car, period. Wouldn't do it. Not going to do it. Um, I've got some that are worth that, but I bought them when they were rusty pieces of junk and it took years and we brought them along. But now the Mercedes thing, uh, some doctor had it. It was brand new, had 8,000 miles, and he just bumped i mean i didn't even paint the hood and fenders just that nose you know just that uh the radiator still it got the air conditioning condenser but the radiator still had fluid it still ran and he started fighting with his insurance company for a year and a half dragging stuff up with a lawyer till the last second and they finally raised a white flag and waved it and said okay fine we'll total it and buy you a car so it went to the sale and a friend of mine's a car dealer and I go to with him, you know, we do a little side hustle with stuff like that, get something and fix it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've gotten a couple of the vans that way. Um, you know, the, the vans with the lowest mileage I've ever gotten were because they were salvage title at the sale and we got it and fixed it. Yeah, uh, yeah I have a car shop, but we don't do body work for the public, but we're capable of it and paint work and stuff. You know, I have a paint booth in the basement of my shop too. But anyway, I mean, we're just car guys. So we're not afraid to go, but everybody doesn't have that. You know, I don't suggest everybody do what I do. As a matter of fact, I suggest most people in the heating and air industry don't do what I do, especially on that subject. But uh, anyway, the car ran, I said, bid on that, bid on that. You know, I don't have a dealer's license. So I have to just go with him. And he says, oh, no, Sounds those like parts are, in, those parts are, you know, get that, get that, get that. And I was just about to quit. I was just about ready to say, never mind. And we got it. <laughs> so I don't have anything in it like you would have in it if you had to go buy it. But she still didn't want it. You know, she's just the frugal, the, she's the sensible one of the family. She's a math teacher. I tell her all the time she should have been an accountant. But she's the sensible one that wants to um, be thankful for, you know, very little. And I want to gain a lot and try to appear thankful for that. I mean, I wish I could 
I wish I could practice as well as I can preach, but I try to be a good steward of my blessings. You know, I try to help other people when I can. I try to, uh, you know, I try to uh, appreciate to the Lord that I appreciate the blessings he's given me, but she would do a better job of that, you know, if I abided by everything she wants to do. So she just didn't want anything that, you know, she'd be fine in a Toyota Camry. She doesn't need that top that raises up and goes under and, you know, she doesn't need that. She'd be just fine in a, a Camry or a Tercel. Too far. I don't don't want that in the yard. (laughs) Isn't, Isn't that like a Corolla? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't make it to sell anymore, do they? Yeah, the Corolla is what I mean. I'm I'm afraid of impact on that. I'm afraid of. um, Yeah, yeah. I'm just. That's like a first car car. That's like when you're a kid, you buy an old one of those or something like that. If you don't like the kid, you buy him one. But yeah, that's that's right. That's a beer can car. You know, it's like one of those little Kia Souls. Have you ever seen that? The hamster things. Yeah, roller skate. Man, I wouldn't Mm -hmm. put my kid in that for nothing. Well, oh, I yeah. I mm. wouldn't put the kid I don't like in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you're, my wife's the opposite of your wife. You know, if it were up to me, we'd have, when it was up to me, uh, <laughs> we had <laughs> like a couple of vans. We had a couple of white vans that cost me three grand a piece. I was like, well, these things are all right. <laughs> one of them was not. One of them was fine, and one of them was definitely the opposite of fine. Uh, but once my, you know, once we had a little bit of success, my wife's like, here's what I want. My dream, and it always starts my dream, fill in the blank. My dream is to have a Honda Odyssey. So what do we have? Honda Odyssey. That's just a few years old. And we bought it at the exact worst time to buy it. Uh, when every used car was elevated 20% in price, it feels like. But we have dreams were realized. And, and we're getting ready. Now, you probably got a newer one. Um our youngest, it's a few years old, yeah. Our, our young, well, that's probably really nice. Our youngest um, got involved in two different accidents and a speeding ticket. And I said, you know what, you're walking. And after a couple months of walking, I said, okay, we'll get him something. I went and bought him a soccer mom van for mm-hmm. twenty five hundred bucks. And I said, hey, it's better than walking. He gladly took it, gladly. You know, because it's yeah. better than walking. But uh, so that's strange. The one she really wanted was my punishment vehicle. That is and funny. I told him, funny. you have to drive this for six months. Well, he's driven it for nine. So just today, you know, just today, I made the last payment on a uh, 2015 convertible Camaro. And we're going to give him that next weekend. He graduated. Give me a, a 20. Oh, my gosh. He graduates from Clemson in December, yeah. which is a, a semester early. Um, he's in the 3.8 range the whole time he's there. Nice. Good job. Yeah. He's never made a B. Actually, he's been, you know, all through school his whole life. Now, he's had some, he's the kid that had those video game issues, and he's the one. That's why I had to throw them all out of the house and say, you know, sorry, but those aren't here because of your over. So we got past that, but um, yeah, if you're a kid and you graduate, man, I couldn't make it through high school. I mean, if you graduate college and in, in, in our family, you're going to get something. He needs a car. What motor's in it? Uh, V6, sorry. Yeah. So close. No, no, <laughs> no SS. Now it's an just, RS. Just go with the Corolla. You know? it's, it's an RS. <laughs> it's an RS. Yeah. And it's red with black stripes and a black convertible top. I mean, it's... It's nice. And, you know, V6s, they do a lot of powerful things with V6s. Well, some of them, but not this one. This is just a... (laughs) No. Other V6s. Yeah. I'm not about to give him a twin turbo Grand National, whatever those, you know, there's some that'll dust your britches. I mean, and and I'm not about to, to do that. But I did feel like he deserved you know he's paid his dues i told him for six months and he's driven it for nine so um but let me see if you think this thing is that bad i don't i don't think you will a camaro i I guarantee i won't think it's that bad well it is a 
a dud. It is a V6. Yeah, but like but they're, the newer V6s are like a lot better than the older V6s. Or like those Camaros that were, what, they four-cylinder? There's 1980s four-cylinder ones. They look oh, nice, no. but they were just they were just like. There's this. Yeah, I think that'll be all right. To replace the Honda Odyssey for a 21-year-old. Mm -hmm. He'll be fine. College student. Um, it does have the stripes and the spoiler. You know, and it's convertible, and it says RS in the grill, which used to mean V8, you know, Rally Sport instead of Super Sport, but it was still they were all V8s in those days. He doesn't like old stuff, so I, man, I can't put him in. Yeah, no, he's he's not uh, now. My oldest boy, who actually is a pastor, he's driving a '73 Charger to church. Oh, that's the last year that they were powerful, isn't it? 74 was the last year of that big. Oh, no, the last powerful one was 71. Oh, they toned them down. Yep. Okay. All the motors lost all their compression and a bunch of stuff. Uh, 70, 71, 72. By, in 74, they were all dead legs. Yeah. Then we got stuff like the Mustang too. Hey, man. Uh, no, that, they're not that, good. That uh, that thing, I thought it was the ugliest Mustang, but you need to pull up the brand new one that's coming out. Is it is it ugly? Absolutely. Oh, so it's you're telling me that the Mustang better. that was built like a Pinto it is not is better than this one. Pull the new one up. I can't. Up I can't pull it up right now. Well, well, I can pull it up on my phone. Yeah, I can pull I'm it up. I'm telling you, the brand new Mustang that is coming out is dog ugly and uh i mean it is really really bad it looks like a prius i think it's a four-door it looks like a prius this i think good. it is a four-door it ain't electric is it well i know i don't have to tell you that there's no such thing as an electric car yeah but i you hope know, i don't in have the spirit to of why i'm saying that. that well it's a it's a coal powered or, or fossil fuel powered battery <laughs> car a, it's battery. a coal power battery car but yeah until we stop generating 80 percent of our electricity with a fossil oh. fuel then the electric car doesn't help anything at all that is weird looking you see the new mustang it looks uh it looks okay. like a hatchback okay pull up a 1974 or five cobra hatchback to 302 four speed you know mustang and tell me you wouldn't rather have that than that thing you're looking Oh, at. no, no. I'm familiar with those. I would rather have back, it than this. The, the 74 notchback is basically a warmed over Pinto. Yeah. I mean, it's bad. And they even had them with four cylinder, 2.0 2 liter for the Pinto motor. Yeah, it's yeah. that was a bad time period. It was an ugly uh, car. It was this ugly this car. thing here that I'm looking at looks like a Fiesta. It reminds me of a Ford hey. Fiesta at this hey. angle that they had this picture taken. Um, and that's bad. That That's real bad, man. That's real yeah. bad. I thought that <laughs> Fiesta looked like a Yugo. It's, this is a throwback to a bad thing. It's just okay. not good. Real quick, do you know why the Chevy Nova would not sell in Mexico? Specifically, no. You know what Nova means in Spanish? I do not. No go. Really? Yeah. And Chevrolet was dumb enough to try to ship a bunch of Novas to Mexico and sell them. Nobody would buy them. That's kind of funny. It's funny they didn't rename it or something no, uh, for like that market. Nova means no go. <laughs> Supernova. There's Super probably no -go. somebody in the chat that can tell us a little better exactly what does Nova mean. But it... it uh, it's like stationary or something. It just means won't move. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a car you're going to sell in Mexico. Like if, if we had a, a new Ford that came out and it was called a POS. You know, yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't think anybody would buy it very much. They would ask questions for sure. But I wouldn't. Now, Joe, I think, has since come around to admit that Chevrolets are superior. But he, I think he, he, he might I just to get out of says, a conversation. Yeah, because he's bored with it. But I think he says the 
actually he's right about this you'd have to hybrid to make the best vehicle i think you'd have to get the motor from chevrolet the transmission from dodge and the chassis and the suspension has always fords have always been superior with uh suspension on trucks they've always had the toughest all the way back to the twin i beam you know everything was always tougher about ford trucks and but if you take what all motor? three what motor uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know anything about. You said from Chevy. You said you uh, take the motor from Chevy. Which Chevy motor? Also said from Joe. Like I don't um, know. I don't no. know. I think the three fifties are gone, aren't they? I don't know if they are. Or Pretty not. much. Pretty much. Uh, and didn't Dodge just say the Hemi is going away, or is it going oh. away in a car? I think you can still get it in a truck. This is the last year of the Hemi Challenger or Hemi Charger. You can't buy a V8 at all, no V8s at all. So now they'll come out wow. with a 900 horsepower supercharged twin yeah. turbo factory nitrous or whatever. Now they're Whee! coming up with something. Yeah, they'll do something <laughs> else. But they're playing along <laughs> with all of this political joke of electric cars. And I think California just announced they're going to get rid of, uh, uh, like, I guess, internal combustion motors. But the problem is we already have load controls on every air conditioner almost that they can get it on. What about charging your car? Yeah, there's a disconnect mentally about that. I'm not sure what they're thinking. No, the disconnect is from reality and politics. Yeah. No, no you're right. Every, I mean, I take my car. Everything has to be made political. Yeah, Whereas, it's, it's an illusion. That's right. Yeah, we, need it's to, an illusion. we need to get over the political thing and realize it. That, and, and I wish people would just take in one thing in mind when they go out to vote. It's not a congeniality contest. And, and our president has to deal with people like, you know, Putin and Xi and Yong Ching Yong and all those, you know. So I, I didn't catch those last couple. Yeah, what I, country I was that? I didn't either. Well, that's where <laughs> they take a, a ball of silverware and throw it up in the air and it comes down and they name their baby hey, even, even though bad. nowadays they frown on stuff like that ted uh i'll tell you a story that will support you uh while still distancing myself from you uh <laughs> i uh, i had a family member whose mother was japanese and that was her joke that's what she said because uh, she said you know how chinese people name their babies they throw their pots and pans around in the kitchen and see what happens chang ping ping chang chang that's what she said all the time it was hilarious. Yeah. Well, now that's Chinese not how they do Japanese it. Japanese are two separate. Two. Yeah, I know. They use a big bundle of silverware because yeah. that's the only use they have for silverware because they eat with sticks. Yeah, where do they even get the silverware? From America. Does anything from America go to China? I thought just the other way. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Now I do know this from some uh, from Chinese customers that I have. And I'm sure they're not lying. Um, there's some engineers with Michelin. There's a lot of a lot of them that have gotten away and gotten an American life. But you might not know this, but they actually make very high quality products in China and they do not export them to the USA. Wait a second. Well, they, you know, they make only uh, the iPhone, only the iPhone, only yeah. the stuff that is owned by uh, if it's a if it's a Chinese company that's purely owned and, and there's no market game being played, like the junk they make all on their own, we're just getting the junk. We're getting the export models. They make a quality contactor and a quality capacitor for their units and they sell us the ones that are gonna fail in one year. Mm -hmm. I, I, I totally believe that. This I mean, like straight... your Milwaukee tools are made in China. But they're supposedly the nicest oh, ones, man, like that, your SDS hammer drill. That hurt there. Are they really? I do believe most of them are made in China. I That's mean, a lot of them are made terrible. in China. I mean, the batteries, some of the batteries, I know from what I've been watching that a lot That's of tools terrible. originate in China. But the batteries, you know, that could be Japan, Vietnam. The cells could be made in a different area. Yeah, it's like this whole global materials thing. It's made in the I United to, States. I used to materials. make excuses for train when they first started using... Um, Copeland compressors because see we always made our own um, with the climate tough and even the scrolls we made our own scrolls but 
eventually it just wasn't efficient and it just wasn't we couldn't stay in the marketplace and and keep making our own compressors so we came into the alliance we came into we tried to disguise it let's just face it copeland makes everybody's compressor almost the mainstream mm -hmm. ones not the uh not the inverters and and whatever but i used to make the excuses that but they were true excuses that um yes copeland makes our compressor but it's smaller and quieter than every anybody else's and they can't make them for anybody else but us and they are specific to our design and spec which was true but unfortunately the alliance was three companies and so you know linux was one of them and i forget the third one linux and train and there was a third one that the alliance was made for so there's only mm. three machines brands that you would see alliance compressors in um and linux was part of that so yeah they had the small quiet scrolls uh unfortunately when they decided back in 2013 or 14 whenever it was to add that rust inhibitor to their oil unfortunately they did mm. that to everybody and uh, we all had txb problems through the roof yeah that's true and, uh, a lot of them that, that little can of oil was 125 dollars from train and the ac renew you know the mtx oil the ac renew version was like 80 dollars or something and we're They're about the same it. though right it's the mtx it's the same thing train yeah. just paid to make their own and bottle it and put their name on it you know yeah. that was all that was but but they still they have to approve of it for you to add it to their machine and uphold the warranty so I used them. Um, they gave it to you free for a long time for a certain serial number base because they sued Copeland and made them, you know, everybody sued Copeland, I think. Yeah. But um, the agreement was we're going to give you this oil and pay you $200 to put it in. Now, I'm telling you, being a train dealer has its advantages. So we got paid 200 bucks and got the free $125 uh oil treatment to put it in but you had to buy it and then get it credit back and jump through hoops and stuff which had never happened with train before you know as a normal warranty situation you give them the serial number they hand you the part and it's over but as those, a dealer yeah yeah as yeah. a dealer oh my gosh if you're not a dealer they treat you like absolute dog and hence the reputation they get from other um, you know, the thing is, and I would say this and it make people think, what, what did you just say? But the, the bad reputation train would get about their parts being so high and this and that, and, and being so hard to get them is really because if you weren't a dealer, they treated you like absolute garbage and didn't want to sell you anything. And they make you pay $1,600 for a $700 part. Yeah, that sounds about right. And that's what, the, well, what, I mean, can you be a fan of that? I no, mean, no, absolutely not. There, Train wasn't the only one who did that sort of thing. I mean, there's other brands that did that, but you're right. I mean, I always used to go time, get them from American Standard instead. Well, they were the worst for a long time. Yeah. Now, no, no, that's, uh, that's true. They were expensive on some stuff. Pretty dadgum bad about it right now. That's who I was thinking um, of, Carrier. Yeah, they're pretty bad about that too. But now Train did it the worst for the longest. I mean, we have our claims to fame that are unmatched. I mean, we had this inverter in 1992 and 93. I still mm -hmm. have the books and the thermostat and it's the same thing. I can show them, but they were above everybody's head. The text couldn't work on them. No matter how many times we went to the class, we just couldn't understand it. And then, cause I was one of those trying to figure them out, you know, but the biggest problem was it was just the Jimi Hendrix of the industry. And it was ahead of its time and nobody would buy them. They were ridiculously expensive. I bet I sold three. Literally. Wow. Like three. Are they still out there? Any of them? I've seen a couple. They were, they were, um, they were 14s, all of them, I do believe. They were like XL 14s. So you never see an XL 14, but they were really old. I have some old pictures of them. I never had videos back in those days, but somewhere that anti guy, what's his name? That uh, 
that uh because he made a board to keep one running that guy he's a real trip man what's his name on youtube here which guy are we talking about the one the one that uh hack free is that his name yeah oh that's a smart guy right there yeah he really absolutely he, he made a board mm -hmm. to make a new air handler match up just and i think he just did it just to prove he could i've um, seen him make a few circuit boards for various things and uh, it was I had no idea what he was doing, but I was impressed. And honestly, I believe Bosch should hire him to complete their product. Yeah, probably that's a great idea. Bosch should hire somebody. Um, because they have a wonderful idea, and it's halfway developed, and they're selling you half of it. Now, if they yeah. would get an air handler and make them communicate, I think they're going to compete with our, our 20 Sear. I mean, they have the name, but they're tarnishing it right now by giving everybody these problems with them but they have the name i mean if they'll complete that product we finally have some competition i i think they're just a couple steps away from making something really good really i mean Super they just I, I don't know they, they make it like it's a like a plug and play sort of thing it ain't but uh, i mean just taking it a couple more steps and just getting rid of that whole idea i think they would be all set just let them the let the outdoor unit tell the indoor blower what to do that's all you got to do. Yeah, and that's what they wanted to do. They just wanted to do it the old-fashioned way. They just they just got to do it a newer way. They want to do it for free. And <laughs> yeah, they want to do it cheaply. It's yeah. not going to happen. But but they could uh, they could come in there and take a bunch of our market and kick our butts with that thing. Yeah, they or sure they could, could you know the, these guys who make these units and they they're communicating. Or, speaking of like Bryant Carrier, we used to do this, where you had your terminals for communicating or your legacy wiring or whatever they called it, where you can wire it just like an older system. I mean, that's all that Bosch would have to do. They could still plug and play if they wanted to, or they could use it to its fullest potential. Or maybe, you know, they'll realize they don't want to do it the old way, just do it a new way. Yeah, well, I know a few people that have some horror stories from them. Um, and... Yeah, I'm one of them several people that came well i'm talking about consumers now you have sense enough to work on your own and figure it out and make the most of it and finally throw it away but <laughs> or whatever you want to do but, it's still here you know okay. but yeah we made the well, most of it yeah you know you you can at least <laughs> if you can understand your problem you can you know if, if you don't know that you have a broken leg you keep trying to walk on it you know and if you know it's broken you can at least get a cane and or cut it off. Try right? to, well, yeah, cut it off and hit the you doctor. Throw it away. The, yeah, <laughs> throw it away. Cut man. it off and hit the doctor over the head that told you it was fixed. But, <laughs> um, but I've had some consumers, you know, some customers that have some real horror stories, and I had a hard time getting them to believe that what I would put in was would actually fix this problem and work. Um, and uh, it it did, but. Sometimes it's hard to, some people just keep digging the hole instead of throwing away the shovel. And it's like, I'm, I'm telling you, you need to stop this battle. You know, you love this house, but you're punishing it. Um, yeah, you get invested some, in stuff, you know. Some people don't appreciate the way I put things from time to time. So I have to be careful not to talk to a consumer or a customer the way I might talk in general. But it's uh it, you know it's kind of an insult that they made such a bad decision and bought something but you know i can usually back out of that by saying well you know i wasn't aware that you were an expert and that you had 30 years of experience with hvac you can't blame yourself for uh falling for propaganda and then there you go you just insulted them again and you know so it's a real delicate tightrope to to talk to people about you know without coming out bluntly and say look you've been had it's a piece of crap throw it away and i'll put in a train you is know, that how you do it is it that simple that's what i'm thinking but be, uh, be plain with it in other words yeah it doesn't doesn't uh well i haven't tried that actually yeah I'm, i mean <laughs> it's a theoretical I'm, method I'm dumb but i'm not that dumb <laughs> so this is a disguise here i'm not really totally dumb <laughs> But uh, this is like watching Larry the Cable Guy. This yeah. is not really how this guy acts. Oh, I don't know if he does or not. 
He, he no, he has a he puts on the southern accent. There's there's interviews with him not talking that way, talking normally. Oh uh, well, I oh, should yeah. have figured that. Didn't you say you met Curtis? Yeah, I, I met Curtis. So, Curtis is that's how he is. Is Curtis Curtis? <laughs> so he actually he, is a trip. That's well, yeah, no, no, we had a good time. Uh, we I'm went sure. to eat. No, because you know he lives in Blacksburg. Uh, which is really close. Actually, it's uh, no, no, no. It's not Blacksburg. Blacksburg is where Virginia Tech is at, I believe. And he lives in the next town down, like Christiansburg or something like that. Everything's named Berg up there. So we were there. We met and we ate at like I don't know, like the Olive Garden or something like that. And it was we talked for like two and a half hours and we're just laughing and stuff, having a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, he was one hundred percent just like you see him. You know, really, which I appreciate. And I, you know, his, him and his wife came. My whole family was there. We just had a great time. Uh, really happy memory. Did he do the laugh in front of people? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, did? yeah. That's what we're waiting for. I mean, my wife knows about the laugh. You know, <laughs> you know whatever. Everybody, I can't even do it. Oh, no. Nobody can do it. I've never met anybody else. That, uh, not quite like he can. I've met some pretty unique laughs, but but his oh, yeah. is, uh, I, I, I didn't think he was acting. Oh, no, that's that's totally legitimate. You know, we just, you know, you can just bring up, like, speaking of trains past, bring up a Maristar, and we'll just laugh all night oh, about it. Oh, gosh. What size screws are they? And there's an hour of laughter right there. You just don't uh, know how where's your Phillips? that plague was that that got on us like that. You just don't know what Ingersoll Rand did to our industry. I mean, you know from the outside, but you just couldn't believe what that was just the most terrible thing and you know they're still doing it they still medea still makes don't they make that ox box no i think the uh, medea makes a lot of them though well the run true i know that's in tyler texas i saw it and i know that's where it's made it's a cheap train in a cheap jacket now that's what a run true is now doesn't american standard side don't they sell Oxbox, or is Oxbox the one that goes out to outside distributors? Now, Oxbox, I thought, was like the outside one. But, you know, I've never put in Oxbox. I never saw an Oxbox. I, I thought oh, that didn't. most of those okay. were Medea. I thought Medea made most of those. Like Run the Ameristar that came later was Medea. All the Ameristars were Medea since. Early on. Early on, they looked just like just well, budget trains. I'll, I'll tell you this. Since Ingersoll Rand was involved, all of the Ameristars were Medeas. And that's when Ameristar was a product line. Now, prior mm -hmm. to that, many years ago, and I've had several arguments with people that just can't understand, the Ameristar was not a product line. It was a particular unit. Um, and it was on those cubes. There was even some of those cubes. Now, it was on the American Standard side, not on the train side. But... It was called an Ameristar. So that's where that name came from. But Medea made them after it became a whole product line. Mm -hmm. And so people get those two mixed up and say, no, I can prove it. Train makes it. Train makes it. Train never made the first Ameristar. Those were all Chinese made Medea products. And just because we made the air handler here and the furnace here and didn't paint it and put Ameristar on it, they... They want to hang on a technicality, but that's not the bad part. The bad part was the condensers that failed and leaked in the coils. Those were made in China. Mm -hmm. and, no, that's uh, right. Definitely that, Chinese. That was the problem with that product line. And I'm glad they got the run, the run true. I don't sell them, but I'm glad they got it. You know, compete in your low end market with that and stop tarnishing our main line. Well, as a trained dealer, the price that you get for whatever the lowest version is now, the lowest, whatever the lowest thing is you can sell, 14 C or split, whatever it is, is it really that much different in price than buying one of these brands we're talking about? Oh, yeah. So there's a significant difference still? Oh, yeah. We, we're going to, what is it, 14.2 or 0.3? Yeah, the C or 2 or whatever. Yeah, the technicality of that is it actually ends up that we just rebadge everything and move it down and drop our 14 line but there are some new products being manufactured doe what does that mean what does that stand for i knew yesterday doe dead on entry but yeah i <laughs> i knew what it, i knew what it meant yes if joe was here he'd 
school us on all this. Joe was here. He was here. Well, Joe is a very new train dealer. Joe has just now become a train dealer. What? Hopefully, hopefully he didn't mind me announcing that. Yeah, Joe's a train dealer. Joe didn't tell me he was a train dealer. I thought he Joe, was a real Joe, person. Joe Shearer is a like train dealer. Well, train geared up for this new garbage coming along better and more than anybody. Um, the real reason were we were cheating on our ratings way less than anybody else. Actually, we weren't cheating at all. Linux was a big part of the problem. There were several of them that were, you know, their so-called 14 seer machines, you know, never made the 14 seer and AHRI mm -hmm. kept catching them over and over and over so bad and said, you know, look, you, you, but see, we put TXVs, you know, all our matchups are true. You can go buy products and mismatch them and screw them all up and they don't make, you know, Mm -hmm. 11 seer i mean especially in a four or five ton but or 12 anyway but um joe knows a lot more about this than i do and he just became a dealer two months ago or a month he likes ago. reading no he's, he's smarter than me no i mean joe does research i've seen those ahr matchups where like they're supposed to be 14 and you look down there and it's 12. It's like, whoa, that ain't right. Or like well, uh, there's 18 Sears and you look at the matchup and it's 15.3 or something well, like that. And that's because that, you know, you have a two ton and a five ton span of re or one and a half and five ton of residential equipment. And if the highest sellers or the center of whatever the two and a half and the three will make the pure Sear, the five ton is given grace and it doesn't have to. There, we've never had a four or five ton matchup that actually made 16 sear. Never had it. Maybe some four tons. There's no five ton today that will make the sear that we're trying. We would have to use uh, a 17 or an 18 to make 16. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah, of the I, tonnage. I, I, I know what you mean. I remember going through this to try to get the sear rating because I told the guys that we're going to put in this sear and then I went to go piece together the system, and I realized that to get the sear rating, this was a mana. You had oh, to yeah. actually get uh, the modular blower and the coil separate and match them together because none of the air handlers would meet the requirement to get right. whatever it was. Six, I think it was pump. just 16. Yeah, yeah on a heat, on pump, a heat pump. That's true. Now, of course, on a fan or a furnace and a coil, you could oversize the coil mm -hmm. and get the right either variable speed, you know, get the right blower and then you're just go type it all into AHRI and see You'll what have you it. get, you know, see You'll what have you it. get. But see, so many of them cheated on the ratings and, uh, uh, you know, that's what we're told. I haven't seen proof of that, but that's what we're told in our meetings, that this is what started all this and did all this and that it wasn't us, that we didn't cheat, and that we were always over. And so I had that argument with Joe at first, and I said, man, I'm telling you, our 14 already made more than that. It already would have matched up and rated, uh, and it's not much. So that tells you right there that if they only going to make it go to 14.2 or 14.3, that tells you that they're just claiming the 14 is not making it, so it actually needs to make it. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't understand the whole thing, and I really don't want to. Um, I just sell the product they give me. Well, I, I, the way I understood you know. it, that it, the part that I understand about the SEER rating is that they're they're putting it to the test in a higher static pressure, like a normal static pressure, and that's the big difference. And nothing yeah. is is good because instead of I think it's point one, they're doing point five. Yeah, which is more normal. So it was unrealistic the way the testing was done. Uh, yeah, that, there was no duck work on that unit, I yeah, guess. That's another thing, and it was just blowing, you know, and so I, it was it was a big hit in the older train dealers. None of these younger guys understood, but in one of the classes, and I brought up this commercial from the 70s where Volkswagen took a bug, a beetle, and they stripped it down, and they put an 80-pound horse jockey sitting on a milk crate holding the steering wheel with no body, no seats, no nothing, and they ran it through the desert on flat ground and they got 86 miles per gallon out of a 1972 Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> a horse jockey. Like and, yeah, he was 80 pounds. <laughs> and 
well, he was, you know, some kind of little 80 pound dude. Gotta get small. Yeah, that's a small guy. Yeah, for sure. You shouldn't say midget. So he wasn't. I don't think you can say midget anymore. Yeah, he's not an Asian Asian midget wrestler. It's that's (laughs) funny. That's funny to watch Asian midget wrestling, but. um, I think you meant Oriental. No, Oriental is about an object. So if you say Oriental, that means like a rug or a lampshade. Look it up. Hey, Asian, I stand corrected. Asian is a person, so I don't want to call a person an object or I could be considered racist. I, I don't even know. This whole conversation has the racist feel to it. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Were we supposed to talk about HVAC? You didn't tell me that. You're talking about rugs. I, I, I don't know if we're supposed to talk about HVAC, but okay. I know we're not supposed to be talking about well, rugs. Well, so Volkswagen said in the commercial, you know, we got a whopping 86 miles per gallon, but nobody really drives that way. So we're advertising an honest 25 miles per gallon. So the point of the static testing was nobody has a unit sitting up on a table with no ductwork in their house. So it might have produced whatever sear that way, but Mm. under an actual, and I think a more realistic static pressure uh, to some of these guys work and the change house and stuff could be about an inch, but... (laughs) 0.5 0.5 is the target. Yeah, I had a... It's a big coil. I had a guy, one of the FSRs, come out, and he, he thought he was going to ding me on something because I was having such trouble out of this unit. Um, and it was a TAM 7 with zoning and a 20... You know, and he said, well, we're going to just... Man, I'm telling you, I don't need to. I did the duct work. Now, if I had done a change out, absolutely I would look at my static pressure. But I'm telling you, so we get there. That's the first thing we're going to do. He was a site visit. He came to help me. Mm-hmm. Punched it up on the TAM on the display. And it was a 3.2, you know. 3.2? Yeah. The static uh, pressure? I'm sorry, 0.32. Oh, I'm about to say 3.2. Yeah. How sorry did you even pull that. that off? Was it like an end cap on the front of the air? Sorry about that. Just <laughs> plugged it off and taped it up with mastic. No, but it was 0.32, <laughs> you know, 0.3. So it, gives you, yeah. it gives you, the, like if you look on a TAM little PDF, the uh, display um that you can actually spin by the way so if it's downflow you can spin it and read it and if it's left discharge or right oh yeah yeah, yeah on the high little front panel thing yeah. yeah 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 the hyperion air handler so anyway i just remember the look on his face I said, man i told you i did all the duct work in this house it's not a change out so we obviously the design is 0.5 right I mean, that's, mm, that's for a lot of them. Yeah, that's design that is acceptable and, and highly efficient, according. And uh, because this had zoning and because of several reasons, we did a certain style of ductwork and it was 0.32. And so that that zipped him up and got him. I said, now you now you're ready to help me find the real problem. Uh, so it ends up that uh, they gave up, too and gave me an air handler and still to this day we don't know so i had already changed both boards i had already changed the eev board and you know there's two boards in the tam i had Mm -hmm. already changed those um changed the air handler the problems go away so to this day we don't know where the breakdown was why it was throwing Hmm. air codes um Prior to him getting there, one of the other FSRs, we had changed the control. We had 950s back then before the 1050. We had changed the control. We had tested the drive and done through the testing process like 80,000 times it felt like. So I finally got him to come do a site visit, one of them. And he's, you know, what's your static? What's your static? I said, I don't know. I can guess. Oh, Red how flags. are you, how in the world are you possibly asking me for help and you don't know the static pressure? I said, well, I guarantee you this design or less is 0.5 or less. Well, you got no way to know that. Well, yes, I do. I did the duct work. I mean, if yeah. somebody stuffed a t-shirt up in my coil, I might have a problem, but, or the filter, I, you know, but I'm telling you, I did the duct work. And so I know what size it is and I know that we're going to be okay, but I can say 0.32. Yeah, but this guy has gone to like 50 houses and you're the one house that was 0.32. Everything else was 1.32 well, probably. Plus, I didn't let him go at any of my other houses either. But that was right. the one that 
I mean, we, we tested a lot. We, we tested, but we put the, uh, probes in the direction that the arrow that field piece puts on there. We don't do like Adam and say it doesn't matter. What the static pressure probes? Yeah, it does matter. But I'll the tell pressure you why. Yeah, I want to hear this because my it, official it position matter. was it doesn't matter. Okay, well you're wrong because it does matter <laughs> because the indicators have a purpose. Okay. Okay. And that's just because it's round and you can't tell where it's pointed, so it needs to be one way or the other. No, it doesn't matter if it's pointing into or away from the stream but it needs to not be sideways. It needs you know, to we, not. We agree. We agree on that. R right. But that was a, uh, you know, that was a trick. <laughs> but it does matter. That's all I said is it matters. You know, it's true. Uh, Which way your trick, pointing, your trick worked. They don't need to be out of 40. They, they don't need to be anywhere except directly in the airflow, in the, you know, along with the airstream. So the arrow is just there so you know where it's at. They don't have to be you know, both pointed opposite of the, you know, into or opposite either way. They just hey. need to be flat. I, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I'm ready to go. I, I, I can measure static tomorrow. Well, you already could, but I got you for a second. You did. You thought I was. I was thinking, hey, like he's going to come up with some my, kind of reason. Sticking my foot in my mouth is what you thought I was doing. See, no, no, no. I thought he's going to come up with some kind of weird reason why it does make sense. And I'm going to be like, okay. And I, because I see, I don't, my mind doesn't go there first. It doesn't go to, hey, this guy's wrong. I'm going to get him. It goes to, what am I not aware of? Yeah. Where's the trick? Yeah. I mean, they could just make them different shape than round. But, you know, when they're round and you put them on, you can't see inside the plenum. So there's an arrow. So you know that you're, correct in the airstream but Absolutely. front or front or back you know i never admitted that to adam by the way that argument is still going so you just admitted that to me within like 10 seconds adam's not watching are you sure yes I, how can you be sure um <laughs> it's like because he's on the other screen of this computer he, he, no he's not <laughs> i'm sure he's not because i can see him no where at? Where are you at, Adam? Speak up. He ain't in here. I don't um, know that Adam's in here or not. So I, I haven't seen him in here. He's only a yeah allowed on YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just pretty sure he's not. That's all. No, I haven't, I haven't seen. I haven't seen him in here tonight. No. His YouTube, you know, um, expiation. What do you want to call that when you really get hooked on it or whatever? It didn't last. Like he made three, four videos and he quit. Now he does still do their show that they do. Yeah, I was about to say they do that every week, I think. They do. I'm not sure why, but they do. <laughs> A lot of people enjoy their show every week. Well. Like last night. It's every Friday night, I think. It's now, they're not always Friday. there. All of them aren't always there because no, I think they work. It's been a couple of years now. Every, I mean, they're up to yeah. 100 and. Some I'd say you gotta you gotta uh, you know tip your hat for um, that the consistency is definitely it, it's there good it's there yeah and the devotion I just I don't see it making any money and I don't see it gaining or losing any popularity so it's the same show all the time I would just get bored and try to develop it or something but the the point is he doesn't watch any of my videos. So why would I think he'd be watching you and me on a live stream? Well, you've proved it to me. I, I now believe he's not watching. Because he didn't say anything. <laughs> he didn't say anything, and I haven't yeah. seen him all night. I don't. I don't. I don't think any of them watch any of that. Uh, that do that show. Watch. I'm going to tell you that. Did you ever meet? Was he there? Did you ever meet Adam? I've I've never met. At, no, I've never met any of them personally. Any ones that are on the show. Oh, any of those four. Well, Joe's secret. He won't let anybody know his address or any of that. He's one of well, he's the, in a different country, too, right? Canada. So are you it's supposed to country. be paranoid when you're in... I mean, nobody can really know... We don't even know what his name is. Put it that way. Um, Bill was there. Chris and Adam, they all three shared a motel room. I think it had at least two bedrooms, but they all shared a 
you know, a, a B and B or whatever you call it, Airbnb. Uh -huh. so they went to something, but I don't know. It must not have been the same thing. So if you've never met him, but really he's a good guy. Really he is. But his YouTube, um, his interest just really got narrowed down and he does that. And that's about it. He doesn't watch any of our videos. I have to call and get him to watch a specific video because I think it's funny or I think it's relevant whether it's mine or yours or John's or who's ever, I have to, you know, text Adam and specifically get him to do it. He just doesn't, honestly, you know what? He doesn't have time. I should make that excuse for him. Yeah, he doesn't have time. And he's not in the chat, I'm sure, because this is just not his cup of tea. I never imagined we talk about Adam so long. A lot of people don't even know who he is. Who's Adam? Well, the static pressure thing. So obviously you don't remember that. Me and him had that huge static pressure argument. I don't remember that. I think they all, the the, the hotel thing, that was for Brian's thing, I think, down in Florida. Oh, yeah. Actually, it was. So where is it you went? What's it called? I went to Atlanta for AHR, and that was, that's been a few years, and that's the last time I'm ever doing anything like that. Is it a big trade show, basically? Just yeah, sales that's... booths? Yeah, there's plenty of salesy stuff, and well, what's the uh, but there's technology advancements on display, things like that. that we're new never going to see, or what? I mean, we don't the, see it for a while, I guess. What's the point of it, though? To sell it to distributors or sell it to? I think for for this one, it there, there's an educational component to it. Some of the other ones, I think, is purely sales, but, but there's a sales component as well. So, but I think you can go out there and, and learn uh, you're as not, well. You're not going back. No, it's just not. I, it's not the sort of thing I enjoy or want to pursue. I saw a little too much crowd to thrill me. Yeah, yeah, they were personally. talking to you about it. That's right. You, were, we mentioned it to you at that time. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. find. I you. would love to have you. seen three or four of those guys. Well, you know what? That's that's what I, I I told people when we end up talking about this. Is my favorite part of that whole thing was just going to dinner with uh ralph ak and tersh that was the part i enjoyed i mean walking around this billion square foot place with a whole bunch of people going have you heard about the new whatever i enjoyed the dinner that's the part i, can, I remember i can do that on google yeah you you could you could get all this on google or just yeah. one of the guys will make a video and you can just watch it yeah now if those were guitars or race cars or drag motors or superchargers or something else maybe i'd go to the show if it was all the newest latest greatest that you weren't going to see any other way but i don't know if i go it'll only be because i want to see a few of the guys that don't go anywhere else yeah i, I don't know i'd like to see joe um what i hate was uh i think joe was there with his dad joe was there i got to meet both of them actually his dad yeah so yeah. unfortunately i'm not going to ever have that opportunity right but i could meet joe and uh several of them you know that uh i've never met adam i'd like to i'm sure he'll be around because when it comes back to atlanta i mean they they seem like they're gonna go to these things from now on is my impression i think so, i'd rather just go down there and go to dinner and not really go to the trade show it just seemed like a trade show to me yeah it essentially is it's just like a big souped up trade show yeah that's all i it mean is. you know we don't always 100 percent agree but i'm 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 right there. I, I see your point of that. That's yeah, what that's... I would enjoy. I'm not, I don't. Man, I quit doing the home show because I just couldn't stand to be stuck in a building for 12 hours a day with uh, 10 million people. I just I, I just don't like it. I don't have anything get... against them. Yeah. I don't even like to go to movies. I'll just wait for it to come out. <laughs> I, I'm not really a fan either. I, I tell my son because he he says I want to go see this new movie. And I was like, well, we'll go see it in two weeks whenever there's like five people in there. That's what I, that's exactly what I tell them because they'd be like, you want to go yeah. to the open a day? He said, you know better than that. I'm not going. No, I'm not going when every seat is full. But, I, you know, the wife can get some stuff that, you know, nobody else can get. She can, I've been to it. I went to see Top Gun. That's the first one in five or six years. Yeah, they, they, they went to go see that too. They, they yeah. really enjoyed it. And I'm looking yeah. forward to watching it because they said it was pretty good. Um, you've seen the first one at least once, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yes, it's a good movie. It really right. is. But 
I'm just as capable as you of just waiting. And as a matter of fact, it's available digitally now, I think. Is it really? Or, or wow, very quickly. Fast. Yeah, or very quickly. I think it's now. I think it's available. She just told me that. So, um, yeah, it's good. It really is. I mean, it was, uh, it, as long as you remember the first one, it's really, it's really there. You know, it's oh, I like That's, the first one. I did too. I mean, especially back then, you know. Oh, yeah. But 1986. I, yeah, I was 20 something. I was Three, seven. Tw- no, you weren't. Really? I'm 43 now. Well, so you probably watched it a lot better when you were 10 or something. Yeah, I watched it later. I didn't go see it in the movie theater. But I mean, all the the movies that came out in that time period, Top Gun from him anyway, like Days of Thunder. Well, we love those movies. We thought they were great. Oh, yeah. I still do. Oh, yeah. We'll watch them again. (laughs) Roadhouse. All those in the same vein. We we love them. Dude, what's that guy's name? Patrick. Dalton. Oh, Patrick Swayze. Yeah. Dalton. Dalton. The Double Deuce. And Sam Elliott. Fantastic. Yeah, that was... That was, but until you really, really devote yourself to the eight, until you watch Heaven Help Us and My Bodyguard, you know the the eighties, you just you haven't really had a flashback. Heaven Help Us was something else, man. That was. I, about, I don't even know what that is. Uh, it's about a, a Catholic school, you know, where you go and the the brothers, you have to call them brother, you know, they're wearing robes and they beat you. Um, this is a this is a movie oh yeah and it is funny as all get out um it's, <laughs> it didn't sound need, like it was gonna you, be you need to get it. no i <laughs> promise you, it's totally funny heaven help us i think it might have matt dylan in it and who's that guy that that was on pretty in pink and he was also on the office as robert california who's that oh guy? um oh yeah. Spader, James Spader? No. Well, maybe so. I don't know if that was. I, I think it might be James Spader. It's the guy yeah. from the Blacklist. I don't know. I didn't see that, but you know, the I saw was. him. I saw him. Uh, well, he was in that as as one of the kids, and I mean, it it was just absolutely. Uh, it it was great. It was so funny, but the the one thing I remember I'll never forget was. This guy name was Caesar, and he had this laminated thing from a doctor that said he couldn't have his character built. In other words, they couldn't, you know, they make you hold your hands out, and go, wham, wham, with a ruler, whatever they do to make you squeal. Well, so he made him crawl. Uh, he got caught chewing gum, so he put his gum on his nose and then crawl on his hands and knees up the aisle for the whole class saying, for whom, brother, for whom? Because he corrected the teacher and said, it's for whom, not for who, you know, for whom. And he said, all right, up and down the aisle, rest of the class. And so he's crawling up and down the aisle on his hands and knees, yelling that out, not letting the, so he had to hold his head. Don't let that gum fall off your nose. And they all sound like torture. in this place. And uh, it well, yeah, it was funny though. At least I didn't recommend Porky's or something. Oh, or Porky's, Dumbass. I remember. You do? Or, or Animal Dumb. House. That's from the 70s, but close enough. Yeah, you know, that's actually hard to sit through now. It, it was Delta, a lot Delta, Delta. funnier back then than it is now. Yeah, I, I can understand why you would say that. Yeah, yeah it, uh, it really was funny. I don't know if it was because of the funny left-handed cigarettes or what, but it was a lot funnier. I saw it in, I saw that in the theater. I Animal House? That. Yes, I did. What year was that? 78 i think oh uh, so i was something. yeah yeah you were i was born in 62 <laughs> so i'm 60 now so 16 then yeah 14 16 oh 78 78 yeah. yeah yeah we went to see it and we thought it was a riot but we'd never seen anything like that yeah, yeah that's seen, what college is about yeah um never seen john belushi really show himself and act Oh yeah, we, yeah. We didn't know what college was like. They couldn't keep us in high school. They seemed pretty easy from that movie. You know what we <laughs> didn't do though? Let me look over here and see. There's 83 people still hanging there. You know what we didn't do was um, gain any HVAC ground. Should we do this again one day or something and try to yeah, devote no, we'll ourselves do it again. To, to, yeah. to 
actually sticking to HVAC and seeing that, um, you know, and maybe we'll let some maybe let some people call in. That's yeah. more of a question than the chat. It's just more of an entertainment type thing, you know, than the chat is. If they call in, they're going to call in with some sort of intelligent question. And if they're in the chat, wow. they're going to say, you know, hey, what color are your shoes? Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't that bad, was it? No, 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 no. Uh, but phone calls are fun. I mean, they, they're not serious, always intelligent. Though. They're yeah. not always intelligent questions. I had some I had some humdingers. Uh, they're fun, though. They're entertaining, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's Saturday night. It's late um, Saturday night. You might get something you weren't bargaining for. And if enough people show up, maybe maybe we'll do a giveaway on the way out. I don't know. You don't really like those anymore, or if you you're more of a contest guy. But well, I, uh, I kind of like I'm, the conversation. I, you know, I was going to give away a shirt, but I think I'll save that for next time anyway because it's eleven, almost eleven thirty, and eleven twenty three. Typically, I go to bed before now, uh, <laughs> especially since my daughter wakes up. Uh, she, my daughter goes to the high school, not tomorrow, obviously, but, uh, during the week, uh, for ROTC Raiders, which is a competition team, athletic competition team, they have to be there before 6 a.m. So we get up at like 5 a.m. every morning. And so I've been going to bed obviously earlier because I used to stay up a lot later. So now I'm, this is really going against my natural clock. Yeah. Being. Here, that wouldn't be a we. Yeah. That would not be we here. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah. Would, that would be she. Well, yeah. last year, my son, who's now closer to you than he is to me, would be driving her there because he was on that team. But now no one has a license except for dear old dad and dear old mom. And guess who's not got the job? Mom. Well, so let's do a quick test. Number one, it's a test, but it's kind of a survey. Let's just ask the chat just quickly. There's 80, well, it just dropped from 83 to 81 as soon as I said I was going to do a test. I just meant, let's see how many are there paying attention. There's Icon of Traga, Tala, Pala, Taga, Tala, that's Taga? Tala, yeah, that's Taga. it. Okay. Um, let's see how many are paying attention and just ask, and you might have to ask it because I'm not really the official asker here. But I'm interested to see where this is going. How many of you guys in the chat would actually come back and watch next time? If we scheduled one for, you know, a year, a month, a few weeks, or whatever. If I came back, so this is Zach's channel and his program. Hey, hey, wait, way to make it variable so I could decide. <laughs> well, I said if. Way to come know. back at some future point. Well, go ahead. No, no, don't let me stop you. Go ahead. Luke, I told you, you don't count till you're 18. <laughs> he said yes. Okay. <laughs> like no, no time period, yeah. nothing. But he will be there. There's Roger. There, there's RJ. There's the other RJ. That's RJ Parker. Um, he's actually like one of those intelligent guys we were talking about as well. Yeah. Um, somebody tell us what is ISU or LSU mean? Uh, Louisiana State University, I believe. Uh, so that's their answer to would you come back? Um, yeah, it looks like they will come back. Uh, here, I'll tell you straight up what we can do. Well, because I'd rather have says, something straight up. He can't remember anything, so he would have to come back because he's forgotten everything. Yeah. Well, that's well. He, Tell us six something or, straight up. You know how to do this better than me. <laughs> six or half dozen. It's fine. Uh, uh, what I did was I've asked Dave to be on this show next week. Dave Norcal. Uh, now I haven't oh, heard right. from him, but uh, assuming that he says yes, if he does say yes, I shouldn't have probably said that because if he says no, I'll feel stupid. But uh, oh, he won't. Well, I, I feel stupid for a second. I'm like, oh, all right. Uh, not the worst thing I've ever done, even today. Uh, but if he says no, or even if he does says yes, you you can come back either next weekend or the weekend after. We can complete the conversation, which we never really started. Did I not finish the question even? Am I that bad? Zach, you're going to have to start directing traffic here a little more because I must have... Uh... <laughs> We're, uh, we're Johnson, about to pull over into the pit. Yeah, Lee Johnson wants to see the midget in the VW, but Sam Andrews says, that. finish the question. So all I was asking was how many would actually come back and watch, but the test was to see how many are paying attention. I don't think that's 80. 
No, that's pretty good there for the chat. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's about twelve on a page. Yeah, that's probably about thirty-six to forty that answered. Uh, yeah, there's some people coming out of there. <laughs> you got the people who never chat to come out and say it's like now he's putting us on the spot and stuff. Well, now you know, there's a huge section. Well, and wait. it was eighty-one a minute ago. I don't, they must have called friends or something on telephone. You get on here, Ted saying something. You know how Ted does crazy it's crap. The new math. No, it's not the new math. But anyway, uh, Zach, I appreciate you having me on with uh, without um, totally structuring it. But I, I, I think you should probably, um, you know, direct me a little more. I'll just sit here and ramble and have fun. I hadn't well, talked to you in a while, so I enjoyed doing that. You know, it's like we were on a talk show and they were just the audience and you know we should, i think we i think they interact. enjoyed that yeah. well no obviously or there wouldn't still be 88 sitting there yeah so. I, I think it i think it was just fine and uh definitely we can bring in some specific subjects which we did talk about some specific stuff as it came up you'd be surprised how much stuff gets talked about that you think is just conversation that's applicable to the people listening i mean there's a lot of it really um but yeah, yeah, the offer does stand. If you're willing, I mean, come back the next opportunity, we'll pick it up. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm hoping that you're gonna start uh, doing like you you had the idea of doing is doing the old fashioned way here a little more. That's what I'm so, trying. That's what I'm right. trying. Well, I think that's a great idea, and uh, you know, every now and then here and now, just you know, maybe do another one or two and let me in there, and maybe we'll maybe we'll try to make it a point to. Uh, you know, we just did a big thing. We were catching up on a lot here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm glad 30 or 40 said they would come back. Um, I'd like to see them all come back. And uh, so I'm usually available. So use me as a filler, Zach. Whenever somebody can't make it, just call me at the last minute and say, hey, look, I need a second fiddle. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I'm going to hold you to it then. No, I can be number two. I don't have a problem with that. I can be number two. We'll go ahead and make the shirt. I can uh, be number two. I want to hear about this duck job on a 20 seer train from Ted. Right. That, that, yeah. Hey, that sounds like stuff we're talking about next time. Well, because... it's a video, actually, so I could oh, bring okay. up. We, we can talk about it next time, actually. preparation, we can show a, little, show a little short clip or two of it because uh, actually it, it, uh, it happened. Now, my other 75,000 duck jobs we won't look at but we'll look at the one <laughs> show them your flex job uh yeah no we're not gonna look at the spider webs no that was bad uh yeah that was real but bad. so do i get cut out and not able to hear the music because i didn't get to hear the end so when you play the music and say bye and let the no, no, as soon as, as, soon as you yeah yeah you won't hear any of that stuff from the way this is set up that's something else i need to that work on it's the whole process here, you can involve two computers with, two separate computers working together streaming. Uh -huh. But it's, uh, I, I don't have the apparatus for it anymore. So I'm, I was trying to, and not because um, I might have it somewhere here, but I haven't located it if I do yeah. still have it. We'll, we'll see. Uh, there'll be improvements made. It'll be overcomplicated before you know it. So, I mean, that's what'll happen. It'll be something that's uh, unsustainable. That, yeah. That's the You'll uh, have that's to handle pattern. all that. that. That's your part. Well, that's the idea. The idea is that you can you can follow along as closely as possible uh, without having to do anything, but just do your part as just talking or whatever yeah. subject we're talking about. So, well, I certainly anyway. enjoyed it, and uh, I'll show up when uh, nobody better can. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I think the guys enjoyed it, too. Um, here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and lay out the stage directions. Uh I'm going to say bye, Ted, and you're going to hit the whatever the thing is at the bottom of the screen uh, that makes you go by. And uh, and there's a couple of reasons why I have to do that specifically okay. from the way it's set up tonight. Yeah. But uh, I really do appreciate it. And uh, I'll probably shoot you a text tomorrow and just kind of remind you that uh, late Great. at night, the previous night, you agreed to come on the show again. And uh, if you uh, deny that, I mean, I'll just tell you, I'll give you a link to the video. Yeah, well, I still have YouTube open, so um, yeah. I enjoyed it again. Thanks a lot, Zach, for having me as a guest. Uh, please do it again. 
peace, love, and chicken grease to everybody, <laughs> whatever all that is, to everybody in the chat. I appreciate them showing up, and we will see you next time. I appreciate it, Ted. Ted Ted's out of here, guys. I know I had a, I had a clip thing to play for you guys. Uh, we had a good time just talking, catching up. Like I said, we were catching up, but to me, uh, that's what is so fun about – shows like this is that you can sit back relax and listen to the conversation not just as a technical training but you can listen to two guys who know the experiences that you have personally uh, most of you out there as far as hvac guys and you can just listen to them going back and forth dropping a few things about the trade dropping a few things about life and i want to thank you it says i got a new member at some point tonight so i appreciate that i don't know who that was i did not see it I apologize. I will check the stuff later and see who it was. But uh, thank you to all the guys who have watched tonight. And it's something that I was trying hard to do and do well. And I feel like you guys came and helped us out. You watched. You fed us information. And I really do appreciate it. It's really awesome. Uh, this will be a podcast come next week. I'll split it into two podcasts because of the length, uh, which serves me well anyway. That'll be good. Uh, I will leave this clip on on the way out. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a clip, and it's going to be the, uh, let's see, what, what was it? It was AK, Andrew Greaves, NorCal, Speak of the Devil, and myself, we did a live stream a couple years ago and had a particularly funny conversation about one of AK's experiences, and I'll let that be our outro. Guys, enjoy the clip, and I will see you on the next one. I never told you the story of the, the Toto toilet that I experienced at a Ferguson's in the showroom. <laughs> well, you were, you were using a so toilet in a showroom? Was, was it the command chair, like Star Wars? Well, when, like I, looked it up, when I looked it up later that night, it was like a $7,000 toilet. Yeah, they got those and in Japan. So I was about to <laughs> myself on uh, the roof. This, the was, right this was back when I, I, was at, uh, I was doing residential light commercial. We had a service contract at Ferguson's. And, it, you know, the urge hits you, you know, always at the worst times. I was up on the roof, and I was like, oh, God, I have to go now. And I did some, like, crazy parkour and stuff to get off the roof. Um, and I, I I run into the Ferguson, and I was like, because it wasn't the supply house part. I, I was the other side. And I ran in. I was in the middle of the showroom. And I'm, like, surrounded by toilets, right? And that's not helping. It's like seeing a bunch of water when you got to pee. And, um... I'm like scrambling around and I find they, they did have a little bathroom near the middle of the, the showroom. And I went in there. I was like, I shut the door. The lights are off. I'm trying to find the light switch. <laughs> and all of a sudden I see this like soft blue glow in the corner of the room. And it was the toilet like waving to me. It was like, it knew I was there and it like opened up. And it was like a freaking dream. It was like a, something out of a movie, man. Come and I was here. like, whoa, wow. whoa. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I run over and I and I sit down and and like as soon as I sit down, it's already heated. Yeah, I took the most luxurious dump <laughs> of my whole life. I think I stayed in there forty minutes just because. And did you, as push, soon as I hey, did you down, push the wash button? So well, okay, so <laughs> when I sat down, <laughs> the wall lit up and I look over and there's a tablet mounted to the wall. This freaking toilet has its own tablet with it. And I'm like, what? And I picked this thing up and I'm, I'm scrolling through the tablet and it had like jungle music. So I was listening to like <laughs> tribal, like jungle music what? to like, for like ambiance, right? I had a good ambiance going. <laughs> um, and it was just amazing, man. And then I'm, I'm looking through the features and I see the, uh, I see the, uh, the wash feature. <laughs> And I was like, okay, you know, I would never admit this to anybody, but I'm here alone and I've, I've heard of a bidet, but I've never used one. And I was like, okay, let's, let's do this. But it, like, it wasn't just an on off button. There was a hundred different options for it. And I was like, this is kind of weird. So I go ahead and I just mashed one of them. And I was like, well, here goes nothing. And I hit it. Well, sure enough, I hit the front wash. So this is for females. And I swear to God, it was like, it was like, and it was freezing cold. So it was temperature controlled and I didn't turn on the warm. So it was like frigid, tight stream of like 40 PSI right into my sack. Like, <laughs> right in, in, like and I shot, 
I shot off the, uh, yeah, I shot off the bowl like 36 <laughs> inches. It, pre- it 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 was so scary to have that happen and, and unsettling. And um yeah, it was crazy, man. And then like, I I I I have the tablet and I'm trying to fumble around there's water all over the tablet from the bidet and like I'm trying to get it to turn the f off. And then I Dude, it ended up being pretty sweet in the end. Once I got it <sighs> wrangled, you know, once I, once I got a handle. The end. That's fine. Yeah, once I got a handle of everything and I get in warm water in the correct orifice, you know, it, it was it was pretty luxurious. <laughs> so that was a really long way of saying those were the toilets we had last week. You know, six, seven years later, I knew what to expect this time. And it has a dryer. So when you're done, you, it's got like a blow dryer in there. <laughs> so you you basically don't need toilet paper. That's that right. was the best story on HVAC ever. That, that's, I'll be that's honest, my man. I can't tonight. I can't believe I've never told it before because it's one of my favorite stories to tell. <clears> because it, it really it it's one of those things that like should have been in a movie the way it happened. I I tried to illustrate as best I could, but like if you had seen it, dude, it would have been it, it was crazy. I probably got the other half of that story where I didn't make it off the roof. I just don't tell this. Story. <laughs> I admit that shit to begin with. Yeah, it happens to all of us. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 